This is Snake. Colonel, can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's the situation, Snake? Looks like listeners can support the show for $8 a month on Patreon. Just as I expected. They can click the link in the description below. But what do they get out of being a Patreon? Listeners get early access to podcast episodes through the Patreon site. They also get access to the official Codec Calls Discord server. Right. They can listen to the live, unedited recordings and even watch gameplay streams. Wow. You must be crazy to miss out on all those Patreon perks. Who's that? Oh, sorry. This is Mei Ling. She was assigned to us as our social media specialists. She posts on all the major platforms, as well as receiving our listener messages. Our frequency is 209-791-0995. It's a dedicated frequency for burst transmissions for fans. Don't forget it. We'll be monitoring our voicemail and messages. They could also contact us by email. Got it. They'll call if they're feeling lonely. Seriously, Snake, we're here to make great content. So email us at info at pixelhyphenbenders.com with questions or advice. Uh, hold you to that, Doctor. By the way, the listeners can play along with us with physical copies of the games. How do they do that? Through our Amazon affiliate links. Affiliate links? How are those going to help you? You never know. Welcome back, everybody. We are here once again. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, Codec Calls, a Metal Gear Saga podcast, and it's been a couple weeks. Uh, last week, we gave you a little uh, a little tease. We tickled your balls a little bit, um, getting you excited for the Metal Gear episode, and we're finally here. I am accompanied by my two co-hosts. Uh, <clears throat> German, aka Contra, aka Riser. Um, I don't remember what other AKs you have. That was, it's just us two. Not AK forty sevens. No, no AK forty seven. AK forty seventy four U. AK seven four U. That's yep. <laughs> Chris, laugh along. <laughs> <laughs> and that is Chris, aka Damn it, Chris. Yep, that's him. AKA the world's worst gamer. He has a third one. AKA, oh, that's right. I was like. Oh. Did I forget something? <laughs> Hero of Men, as Maui says. Um, yeah, Chris surprised us today. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, German, he fucking um, decided to stream. No, I didn't see that. I, I didn't catch it at all. Working. I know you're working too, but yeah, I don't know. I don't always catch that stuff. I went in there and I was like, hey, this was not authorized. What the fuck are you doing <laughs> online? <laughs> That's cool. I'm glad you played a little bit online, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mostly heard him because I couldn't watch... And we were talking about it a little bit before we went live here, but it was difficult to watch you play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you made a new file on hard. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, you you were in the docks at one point and you were like, wait, where's my radar? <laughs> yeah. It took me a good minute to realize I didn't have the radar yet. <laughs> yeah. And somebody in chat was like, uh, it said in the menu that hard does not have radar on. So, <laughs> so there was that. Anyways, so let's recap real quick. We have played through, almost all the way through, uh, four games. Metal Gear on the MSX, Metal Gear on the NES. Those ones for sure we all beat. Um, And then Snake's Revenge, which Chris uh, did not have time to make an attempt on, but at some point he will. Maybe we'll come back to that. Yeah. Um, I tried. Uh, I guess I got through a quarter of the game. You made it further, I believe, out of all of us. Yeah, but only a quarter through, which is, I don't know if that's accomplishing anything. Um, and then German, you made it, I'd say, I'd say not that far behind me, honestly. Um, yeah. You just like, got so stuck in that one spot. That's it. The, the, the door that did not look like a goddamn door. The door that did not exist. <laughs> that pissed me off. I'm sorry that the, the assets nagging were not the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was clearly a door to me. but it's, <laughs> I thought it was just background, sort of guy. Yeah. And those two giant things, that looked like the door to me, so. Yes, the thing that you were looking at that you texted me on, you're like, this thing? And I was <laughs> like, those do look like doors, but they did not open for me either, so I knew that. Was it a that's, thing? I was like, I was, that's like, do I need to? I put C4 on that. I tried the key cards. I was like, what the? I was like, maybe they're trying to do one of those BS, like, you got to get caught, you know, kind of board, you know. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I was like, I'm done. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. That game, Snake's Revenge, is brutal. I do want to beat it one day. Um, I have you know my safe state, so. Yeah. I won't lie. Um, the music kind of caught on to me, and I was kind of digging the music. Even uh, when yeah. we were playing this, these, you know, MG, uh, Solid 1 here. I still hum some of those uh, other tunes. They they're not horrible cuz you hear those like crazy, you know. That's those are the uh, there's only like three tracks in all the OG games, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the the what is it called? Um ter- the Terra theme or whatever the dun, dun, Yeah, bum, yeah, yeah, bum, yeah. Bum, bum, oh, bum. I love that. Yeah. That <laughs> one is so good. Uh, it's great. Um Yes, I I agree with Snake's Revenge also. The, that music was great also. Um even the the NES Metal Gear, because it yeah. didn't have, they didn't all have the same music. They did have their own. They did have unique uh, stuff. No, it, it was like I said. I mean, we 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 played them for a solid like minute. You know, I mean, we played for almost a week straight. You know, just a couple hours here and there. At least I did. You know. Yeah. So they they definitely got logged into my brain. So yeah, I'm glad we put some real effort into it because I I feel like those games are just lost to time. And you know, German and I have played the other games to death. So it was nice to get some fresh, um, some fresh Metal Gear stuff, uh, even yeah. though, even though it's insanely old and probably stale to some people. They're like, "What the hell? You're barely playing that now?" Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, like you said, it it was nice to we know the storyline, we know what happens, but to actually do it, to actually play it, to actually say like, "Oh yeah, I fought Gray Fox. I read about it before in the future games, but you know, I actually yeah. did it this time." It, it felt like a piece missing. Yeah. out of our experience because it's like yeah it's like somebody telling you a story uh yeah and you living through it that was definitely completely different mm-hmm. um and then we've had we've sometimes been talking about this podcast in front of our coworkers, and they're like what can you talk about and we'll we'll say uh metal gear and they're like the nes one and we're like yeah like we <laughs> sometimes we will explain <laughs> the whole thing like well originally you know we we, we become those actually people um, yeah yeah they were like they're like the one for PlayStation? No, the one for the MSX. MSX. Yeah. Like the what? what? The hell is that? It's the original one. <laughs> yeah, the, on yeah. PlayStation? No, 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 no. The original, original. <laughs> yeah, the ori- Yeah, apparently there's original, original. But uh, I'm glad that it's piquing like their interest and stuff, and um, uh, people are, are getting into it. Um, I'm seeing the the stats on our podcast, and we have over, um, if I'm not mistaken, over 100 downloads. On just those five episodes alone. Oh, wow. Dang. Which is uh, surprising to me, honestly. Um, but I'm super happy about. Um, and then, yeah. All right. And then we did. Um, so we we kind of jumped over Snake's Revenge because that shit was too hard for now. Um, maybe we'll have like a Snake's Revenge reprise episode or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Uh, is it reprise or reprieve or what is the word? We'll make up our own term, you know, like a uh, <laughs> subsistence and all that stuff. We'll, we'll call it something. Snake's Revenge Revengeance. <laughs> there you go. No, that revengeance already exists. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Hind D's Revenge. There you go. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> and then we moved on to Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake on the yeah. MSX. And we all beat that one because it was actually a much more playable game compared to the other three. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was actually like consistent rules. It was engaging, like as it it's it had story, it had deeper codec calls. Yeah, like the best you can do at the time. You yeah, nineteen ninety. Um, well, well, like I said, it it I think I said in that episode, it did definitely lay more of the ground rules for the upcoming games. Some of the stuff in this game, the radar was introduced yes. in that game, and that's yeah. literally the same radar we're using in Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, I had a hard time at the beginning with the radar because. It's in a grid system, so mm-hmm. it depends what screen you're on. And in my brain, I'm like, I just want it to move as I'm moving. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't. I'm going to have to adjust the way I think and everything. And you can knock on walls and you can <laughs> crawl. So, yeah, like all the things that start making Metal Gear, Metal Gear are existing here, um, which is dope. Which mm-hmm. brings us to this week, um, part one of three for... Metal Gear Solid, mm-hmm. the one that is most widely known and uh, revered and celebrated, and yeah. it changed gaming forever. Um, I don't want to take away from it, but now that I played the other two, I'm like, those ones did it first for sure. Yeah, <laughs> and just never got the attention that they should have gotten in the states. Yeah, because um, in Japan they totally did. In Japan, everyone was like, more, more Metal Gear, please. Metal Gear. 
Metal Gear. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, so we played through the first third. Um, I'm dividing it into bosses. That's kind of how I I figured out that that was a third because I guess there's nine boss fights. Yes, yeah, so we played up until the lab, the laboratory boss fight, mm-hmm. um, which brings me over to Chris. Yeah. What happened in this game? Well, I got to say, I was actually quite shocked at uh, how relatively easy it was for me to get through it. I know you talked about, like, you were watching my stream earlier and it was hard to watch. That's, spoiler for anyone who doesn't know, that's all my games. <laughs> Any yep. game that you watch me play is hard to watch. But I was I was quite impressed with myself or the game or both. Never had to look through, at a walkthrough once. Never had to look anything up. Never had to never had to Google anything. Um, it was all pretty intuitive. Um, the codec calls all made sense. Like they were fairly straightforward with their hints and everything like that. It wasn't you didn't have to guess. You didn't have to like uh, do I have to go around punchy walls? Do I have to do this? Like mm. at least not yet anyway. I don't know if that comes later in the game. I'm sure it will. But the first third and I think I had mentioned this to you, noise. Like I beat the first boss and I was like, wait that was it? Like, that was the boss? Like, I thought it was just, like, a mini boss or something. And uh, before I knew it, I was at the second boss, and then, like, that took me a little while to figure out how to beat and got past that, and then I got to the third boss, and I was like, this is it? Like, what? Because <laughs> I think I, I, I was done, like, within, I think, three days, two or three days or something, and I was like, what? No, there's no way that's that was it. What did I miss? Like, mm-hmm. And then, yeah, you guys had challenged me to go back and try it on hard mode, and so I tried that, and and of course, you got to witness all of that. But uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a good experience. It was uh, significantly easier gameplay and everything than the first two in more ways than one. I think the only thing that really kind of got me uh, hung up was the like if you're if you're going along a wall or if you're like going down towards a wall and you're too close to a corner, he'll just automatically hug onto the wall. It's like, no, I don't want you to do that. Just keep moving. You know, mm-hmm. um, I think that was the only thing as far as like controls and ease of access or whatever you want to call it that i had any sort of issue with but even that it wasn't too bad just you know stay decent ways to live away from walls otherwise like it had pointed out in the uh trailers and mm. it, it took me a while to remember that i the sneaking into the camera thing and it's like oh yeah i can i can hide hung up against the wall and and not have to worry about the camera seeing me and because uh, i remember there was a couple items in some spots where like there was good camera coverage pretty much constantly i was like how am i supposed to get to that and then I remember that from the trailer. I was like, oh, yeah, I can hug the wall. And I tried it, and it worked. And I was like, cool. But, yeah, overall, it was a, a awesome experience. I enjoyed the game very much. Um, I can see why this is what made it popular in the U.S. Because it, it was a it was much more playable, I think, in my opinion, than uh, or user-friendly, I should say, um, than some of the previous games. So, What did you, what did you think about the um, menu, the item menus? The, uh, the that was R2. interesting. Mm-hmm. That it took me took me a bit to get used to that, um, but I think because I played Monster Hunter, um, uh, okay. I was kind of used to it already. So it wasn't it wasn't that much of a uh, learning curve for me. It wasn't like foreign because yeah, you're yeah. right. You you cycle through items by yeah 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 yeah. So but I think if it wasn't for that, it would have taken me a bit. Like wait, how does this work? Mm-hmm. Um, to you know, because you press up and it goes to the right, and you press down, it goes to the left. So that took that took a bit for me to catch on to. You could just yeah, do uh, left and right or up and down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you do the tactical tactical reload, Chris? I don't know what that is, so I'm guessing no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what we're saying. Like, there's there's so much into this game. I mean, I would love that even once we finish playing it, maybe it stays part of you and you play it again, rebeat it or something. There, there, oh, I mean, I'm, there's I'm sure there's yeah. hundreds of codec calls and and. Easter eggs and stuff to see and hear and find, but the tech reload it it doesn't help too much in this game in my opinion. But if you have a like your SOCOM for example and you shot three bullets, um, L R one R one if you tap it it unequips it and you tap it again it reequips it with full ammo. Oh okay. So that that's a, called the tactical reload and um, gotcha. It, it comes in handy. I'll tell yeah. you that much. But you know th- I do agree with you. I know I've beaten this game like crazy back in the day and it makes me laugh. I beat it like my first sit through. I think you did too, Noise. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I was like, man, this took me like a month to beat, but not back when I was a kid. And I, I, it just boggles me that I'm like, like you said, Chris, I'm like, I'm already at the lab. I'm like, damn. I'm yeah. Like, I could have sworn this took me like a week and a half last time, you know, when I played when I was a kid. But as a kid, we were dumber and I probably was getting caught <laughs> a lot too, you know. So, but um, 
I didn't have, you know, I didn't have any problems. Uh, I did have a few problems. I did. I won't lie. There was a few times I kept, I kept thinking like more current gen AI. So I kept thinking I was going to get caught when I clearly know the Metal Gear Solid 1's AI is a little dumber, let's just say, than some of the future stuff. Um, Because you got the cone of vision and you can literally be just outside the cone of vision and they won't see you. You know, they just, Mm -hmm. they'll just walk right by you. Um, So, you know, I kind of got caught caught a few times just because I was forced to have, I was playing, you know, like if they were smarter uh, soldiers than they really were. Um, But yeah, I I was going to ask you like any, any troubles with um revolver ocelot what what did you think of uh of his little boss fight because you're right you mention it it does feel like a little like a mini fight really a boss fight yeah. mini boss um so i actually i wouldn't i wouldn't say i had trouble with him it was more the mechanics i guess that i had issue with because like i remember in the in the very beginning when you you break out of your, that one guy's gel cell the uh, darpa mm-hmm. agent or darpa president chief. or whatever chief yeah you you have that little thing where the guards come in three at a time and you have to shoot them. Mm-hmm. And my experience with that was, oh, the game auto aims for you. So I was like, cool, it auto aims. I don't have to worry about like manually aiming. And between that and fighting Ocelot, I didn't shoot anyone. I just if I, if Learn went off, I would punch him and run off or like try to hide or you know cl- climb up the ladder or whatever. So I never I between those two fights, I never shot anyone. And then when I got to Ocelot, I was like, oh, he's running around, but my thing will auto aim. So I would I would press square and shoot and he wouldn't take any damage. And I was like, what? And so I would shoot multiple times and one of them would hit. And then I made I like the first few fights, I made the mistake of like basically unloading a whole clip on him because like, oh, he's stuck there. I'll hit him. Mm-hmm. But he has that immunity yep. that or uh, in invulnerability. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, OK, don't do that. And then I would go around you know, collecting the ammo or whatever. And I remember one of the times I went to collect that little piece of ammo uh, <laughs> yep. right by those trip wires. And I set it off and I was like, no, you got to be kidding me. So I thought that ammo was set there for a trap. And I was like, okay, so I can't use that ammo. So I went and collected the other two pieces of ammo. And then I eventually ran out of that. And so I was like, I have to get that ammo. There's got to be a way other, like, other, why would they put it there? And so I, I moved in real careful. I can got it. And I went out real careful again too. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in that same fight where I got that piece of ammo, I shot through those wires and set off the C4 again. So I was like, okay, that's good attention to detail, but that kind of sucks too, you know. But I I think it was uh, in my original playthrough was on normal, um, and I think it took me four rounds to get through it. I beat him on the fourth one, I think, maybe the mm-hmm. fifth. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't terrible. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be, you know. Jesse beat you on that. It only took her. Three tries. I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, did uh, Chris, a uh, question actually, have you been using the joystick or the D pad? A uh, little bit of both for movement. Like when I'm moving around the map, I usually use the D pad. Mm-hmm. Um, joystick, I try not to use too much, but by force of habit, mm-hmm. because of more modern games, I think I use it a little more than I probably should. Okay. But yeah, I, I generally try to use the D pad just because it's a little more. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Noise, but I believe this game was originally only playable with the D-pad, correct? It did release before the DualShock, I believe. I'm, I'm confidently sure it was. So um, I've been playing with D-pad um, pretty much like 95% of the time. There was a few times, like you said, out of force of habit, I would start using joystick. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. And and I think it makes a difference when, when you're playing games that weren't designed with joystick in mind, you know, every now and then I'll be playing emulators or whatever, or even games that have been ported over to the switch that were made with the D pad in mind. And I'm always like, Nope, use the D pad. Cause that's what it was built with in mind. So yeah, I think it does make a difference when you play them and the noise, what I, I confused again, I've been confused for a minute with this game. What version is Chris play? Uh, Chris is playing the original USA version he's not Play, playing playstation on playstation yes okay okay um he's not playing integral he's not playing master or hd or none of that okay yeah. so so chris got the blurred out knocked out guard yep. <laughs> yes yeah. i yes. specifically chose that version because i wanted him to see the good. pixelated butt <laughs> yeah good 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 because i told him in future versions i think from the pc version on um he's wearing underwear mm-hmm. which uh. I, I feel like that takes away from the joke because it's it's just funnier with the blurred pixels. 
Yeah, yeah I, I remember when I first saw that, you know, geez, back in 1990-whatever, nine or something. And I was like, what the fuck? I was right, like, you like <laughs> gasp. You're like, oh, what the hell? You know, It's like when um, you read the word shit when Barrett yeah, yeah. says it in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Like, oh, my, yeah. what am I? Should my parents see me playing this? Game? I know, right? I know. <laughs> no, um, that, that's good. I'm glad you gave him that version because definitely I, I will bring up some differences later on. And um, I don't know. What version are you playing, Noise? So originally beat it with the USA version. Okay. And then I started um, speed running it. And then I remembered that the integral version, which is the Japanese version, mm-hmm. that one lets you skip that uh, that cutscene at the end that's unskippable. I don't know if you know which one I'm talking about. The the, the monologue, the okay. one that you can't skip normally. Mm-hmm. Um, so that helps with the speed run. And also you can... You can play the game in first person in Integral, yeah. but I've never done it, and I forget by the time I beat the game. I'm like, oh, wait, I could do that. Yeah. You have to beat it once, right? And then you can play it in first person, I think. Oh, maybe that's why. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I when like, I read that too, I'm like, mm, I want to, yeah, you got to beat it once. But yeah. um, on the PC one, I think you could, you can aim and shoot right off the bat. But in, in, in Integral, the Integral version you're playing, it's the Japanese, the, the, the PlayStation 1 version, right? It's not the HD yes. or nothing. Okay. All the dialogue is still in English, oddly yeah. enough. Mm-hmm. But the the even if you put the language in English on captions and or yeah, I think that's all it has. The subtitles in the codec or in the cutscenes, I forget which one. They're still in Japanese for some reason. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? Things are in English. Uh, uh, I guess um, this is um, Kojima did it first. Konami did it first. This kind of reminds me of Kingdom Hearts, like the final mixes that you know. They, when they make the final mix for Japan, it's all English voice, and then they put Japanese dub on it. So, so that makes me wonder if they ever did really do a Japanese dub. For Metal Gear 1? Yeah, like was Akio Otsuka hmm. Solid Snake since then, or did he come in with Metal Gear Solid 2? You know what? That, that's so funny. We should uh, look into that. But yeah, so like I said, we, we will, I want to see talk about these uh, differences because I'm playing the... Uh, master collection how'd you like those blurred pixels well yeah <laughs> i i know there's differences between the re, you know re-releases and the original but i i have a feeling that even this a this master collection has differences compared to those ones but you know we'll get to that those when we get there yeah as far as i know i don't think there are any except the yeah, fact any that, new ones yeah i don't think they they changed anything i think it's just that they they put a filter on the pixels so that they're softened up mm-hmm and I think that's it. oh oh. Did you notice why did did you play with joystick at all? I did a little bit, like I said, very little, but yeah. Why did you notice that it wasn't working? No, joystick worked for me. Right, it's working, but it's mm-hmm. only giving you eight directions. It's, oh, really? It's not doing analog d- uh, directions, so it's not three hundred sixty degrees. Okay, like if you go if you go up left and maybe a little bit down, you're still going to be doing forty five degrees in up left. Okay, I, I could see that. So that's that's um. That's another reason Master Collection sucks. They didn't even put the effort into actually turning on analog. They just uh. they just supported analog controllers. But it's because, you know, like when you played on PS1 or PS2, even on PS3, like PS1 and PS2 had that analog button on the controller for you to turn on analog. Mm-hmm. Remember on DualShock? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then PS3, you had to go into the menu and turn on. You had to switch from digital to analog controller and then it, then it would work. But... But would it work? See, that my question is, the game was designed with D-pad in mind, which would only support up and right, like per se, you know, that 45 degree angle. The thing is, I think it was being developed around the same time and Kojima had access. Okay. Because the code does give you 360 degrees does of movement. Does it? Okay. Okay. Um, which is, it's way better for speed running, right? Because instead of moving in 45 degree angles, you can actually curve and get like milliseconds of time moving quicker that way and then other times that's what i would do like the the ocelot fight for example i would use the d-pad for that because it's more precise going around those corners you know yeah. what i mean you go around those corners and you get an instant like oh my my laser is right on ocelot i can shoot now before he jumps around that corner if you do that on analog it's you're gonna be off by like four or five degrees and you're not gonna be able to shoot them so in certain fights like that one and 
I don't really think there's other ones that really ask you for that kind of precision, but the D-pad for sure on Ocelot is, um, I think that's necessary. Um, analog is kind of weird on that fight. Hmm. How, uh, so do you just kind of wait, Chris, or and noise for, um, Os- do you just run around and wait for Ocelot to waste his ammo? Or how, how did you guys take on this fight? Uh, Luis, I know you were doing some speed strats, so what, what did you do? Um, so... I do what I normally do, which is, it's something I suggested to Chris, but I know he forgot it because I watched him fight Ocelot again today. (laughs) (laughs) Also, it tells you in the manual that I sent to you, (laughs) I gave it to you for a reason. Yep. Not just because it's, it tells you like some things that, things that the game doesn't tell you, right? Like remember those, those videos on YouTube, like things that the game doesn't tell you. This game does in the manual, but uh, the run and gun, which Mm -hmm. is really important I didn't know about the run and gun, even though I had the game and I didn't, I guess I didn't pay attention to the manual. You know, I'm, I was, you know, at the time I was just looking at the art and I was like, this is amazing. Like, look at that. I've never seen art like this before. You know, like we'll dive into uh, Yoji Shinkawa's hmm. art also. Uh, he's just a genius. Like he defined a generation of, of uh, anime and 3D art mixing together. But uh, the run and gun uh, strategy is the normal way to go. That's the only way to do it in speed strats. Anyway, you kind of have to um, you kind of have to push him in directions to get him to kind of stop at the right corner. Mm-hmm. Because if you just chase him, anything above normal mode, like if hard or or extreme, he'll just keep running, and he is faster than you. He's faster on hard and on hard. I think he's as as fast as you, but on extreme, he is fucking sprinting you are not going to catch up to him if you're going to run around him in a circle so you basically have to like lure him or you have to push him in a certain way and then turn around and then try to get him for through the other you know try to through a blind spot or something like from behind Mm, okay that's that's the only way to do it like on extreme and hard but like german was mentioning which i kind of forgot because i haven't done this since maybe the first couple you know first years of me playing Metal gear solid was that you do just wait for him to deplete his his six rounds and then he's like sitting there reloading Mm -hmm. and you can run up behind him and get a free shot and then you can kind of chase him after that for a few shots and like i said if if you get the right rhythm at least on on normal and stuff you you can chase him all the way through yeah like you can shoot him and then usually i do like a little uh circle yeah a little little baby circle a little baby circle shoot him again baby circle like i wait until he stops blinking because those are his iframes yep and yeah like i was like screaming at your stream chris as you were like (laughs) unloading on revolver and i was like you already shot him you've already hit him once (laughs) stop shooting (laughs) so so i did a strat that i had and i'm not claiming that i developed it nothing like that but that i learned on twin snakes and i thought it was funny i didn't know if it worked for these because i said I played the hell out of this one and then the hell out of two. And then I played twin snakes enough. You can actually just press up against one of the pillars. And I think it's so funny because it goes into, you know, the, the camera mode where that looks behind you, if you will. And uh, he's like, Oh, hiding from me won't help you. And he shoots a bullet. And the way the game programs his AI or whatever you want to call it is he's aiming at your head. So as soon as he shoots, you just crouch down and the bullet will always just hit right above your head. Huh. And, and then you stand up and he shoots again. You crouch and it just hits right above your head. And on the sixth shot, then you start chasing him. And I always love doing that. And I was like, I wonder if it works for this one. And, and it does. <laughs> you can still crouch and dodge his bullets that way. Okay. Give that a shot. That's, it's fun to do that. Um, so just based on your, your, your sound, Chris, uh, or your comments, Chris, uh, had fun with us a lot. Let's just say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did you think of the ninja, Chris? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Hold oh. on. You just huh. skipped the boss. No, you didn't. Yeah, you did. Yeah. No, no. Well, ninja comes in and Ocelot. No. Nope. That's your. F- yeah, he does. No, he does not. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Okay. So no, does. hold on. So after okay. Ocelot, um, by the way, huh. we should we um we're just gonna do gameplay right now and then we'll talk story. Okay. 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 Just because okay. that's kind of what we're doing right now. Okay. Cool. Um. Okay. So after that, the arms tech president Kenneth Baker tells you that you need to get a hold of Merrill, right? Well, he doesn't say. Th- Does he say her name? I don't know. Good question. I, I think, don't know if he I says think her he name. did. Okay. Anyway, so get a hold of her, and he says that the frequency is in the back of the CD case. Mm-hmm. Did this stump you at all, or were you kind of like trained by the previous Metal Gears to think outside of the game, so to speak? Because it's not just outside of the box. You literally have to think outside of the game. Yeah. So my initial thought was because he hands you that disc. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. my initial thought was there must be some way to examine that item mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like and Resident look at Evil, the back right? Of it. Yeah, <laughs> and look at the back of it and get it. Once I saw that item wasn't in my inventory, then I was like, oh, he meant the actual back of the CD case the game came in. So is it, it not in your inventory? I what? didn't see it in there. The optical disc? Yeah. Uh, well, it's, in your, it's in your items. Yeah, is that's it? what I thought. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I must have missed it. Okay. Yeah. No, the o- optical disc. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, not the game case, but the optical no, disc. No, yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Which, which, which I, I'm kind of. What if the game case was in your that is <laughs> inventory? That would be fucking awesome. <laughs> which, which kind of jump in a tiny bit. That item is completely freaking useless. It, it doesn't. It just takes up a spot. Yeah. 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 Anyways, sorry. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, so my, my initial thought was not the back of the actual CD case the game came in. But it was a secondary thought. Mm. Um, it was the next one. So, yeah, because I could have sworn that my item wasn't in my inventory. I must have missed it or something. That wouldn't be the first time. It won't be the last. Uh, but, yeah, that's when I had messaged you, like, oh, is it on the back of the CD case? And I wasn't looking for you to tell me, like, where it was. I was just looking, like, if it is, tell me yes. If not, tell me no. Don't tell me where it is. Just, you know, I'm just curious if that's where it is. And that's when you sent me that the file over Discord. Yeah, I sent you the game manual because yeah. um, not a lot of people seem to mention this, which blows my mind. But the game manual has the frequency inside also. There's there's a section that has codec frequencies for yeah. like the crew pretty much. So it's got Campbell, it's got Mei Ling, it's got Master Miller, uh, Nastasha Romanenko, and I think that's it. Then, then Merrill, which is weird that it's just like right there. Mm-hmm. But yes, so... Chris didn't actually, that's why I sent him the manual. I was like, go ahead and look through the manual, whatever, if you want. And I kind of let him kind of, kind of sit on that to see if he was going to ask anything further. And then I, and I think he said something else. And I was like, there is a spot that says codec frequencies. Yeah. Well, what I, what I had initially thought was like, oh, I'm looking for the, like a picture of the back of the CD case because that's where the, the thing is. Right. And so I, I, I kind of glanced through, I didn't want to read too much of it because I didn't know if it contained spoilers. I figured it probably didn't because you had just sent it to me, and I figured like you would have found some way to cut out any spoilers or whatever that I don't need to know until later or something like that. But I didn't want to like read something and like put something together and like, oh, that's what this is, or this that's who the big boss is, or anything like that. So I just mm-hmm. like I'm just gonna glance through, see what I can find, and I didn't see anything like this is what it looks like. And I had actually um, did I did do an image search of the back of the CD case. And I saw where it was, and I'm like, okay. So I'm looking through this manual for that, and I'm like, I don't see it. And then that's when I had messaged you again, like, I don't see it on here. Where's the back of the case? And you're like, no, it's in there, stupid. I was like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, for everyone who doesn't know, he didn't actually call me stupid. That was just <laughs> I was just thinking yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's so rare that I see that mentioned, which shows how many people didn't actually read through the manual which is nuts because even even like metal gear veterans don't mention that it's in the manual and i'm like really like you should definitely know this like it's in there and the game does not have any spoilers um whatsoever except for maybe the part where you get to the glossary at the end when when it's like defining uh what terms you know like what is darpa what is arms tech Mm -hmm. there are a couple definitions there that are like uh this should be left for the game to explain to you but Mm. Other than that, mm. like, there's no spoilers in that manual whatsoever. Like, okay, it teaches you the run and gun. Um, you know, it's like hold square and then hold X at the same time, and then you can run. And then by letting go of square and tapping square while still holding X, then you can shoot while you're running. Such a because because yeah, the ocelot fight without that, you have to sneak up behind him while he's reloading. Oh yeah, and then shoot. Definitely um, didn't know with a running gun my first. Oh, maybe, no way. My yeah. second. Yeah. I, I don't think I learned that until that way later until I was like just pushing, mashing buttons like, oh, shit, you can run with yeah. your gun. I That's didn't cool. learn that until um, until I was actually playing on extreme because I was like, dude, even if I catch up to him, he reloads so fast that I can't get a shot off. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, there has to be. I mean, this is impossible. And yeah, like, I don't know if I read in the manual or talking with friends. But I learned the, the the running gun from something, and I was like, "Oh, this! Oh, this changes this fight completely. Like he just yeah. becomes easy mode. Like even <laughs> on extreme, like as long as you don't let him shoot you. Which, by the yeah. way, he ricochets bullets. He's yeah. a fucking gun. You know, he's master. a master. Yeah. He's a gun, master gun uh, what gunner, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, um, gun. I don't know what the word is, but he's yeah, a master gun. <laughs> um, 
hold on. He's from Wanted. He can curve the bullets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. He's uh, bashed Stampede. Hey, he's Western. Um, I don't know if anyone knows that. Try good. Gunslinger. That's the word. There you go. Oh, there you go. Gunslinger. Master Gunslinger. Yes. Uh, I took down some notes. Um, I don't know what half of them pertain to anymore because I literally wrote down like two words. But there is one. <laughs> but there is nice. one that I did want to touch um, on base on is when we're talking about, you know, controllers and game and stuff. And God damn it. I forgot and I, I hate and I miss the, I call it the Japanese scheme, uh, controller setup where circle is enter and X right, is yeah. back. And it, I remember back in the day, it drove me crazy and it drives me crazy here because to, I'm playing it technically, I guess, an emulation version of it, right? Yeah. I have to use American style to select the game. But then when I select the game, I had to switch to <laughs> Japanese style <laughs> And I'm like, I'm constantly like, no, like get out of options and go back. And then I'm in the game and I push X. I'm like, no, I'm like, I want you. And the codec calls. I'm like, <laughs> damn it. I wanted to send the call, not not close the codec. I was just getting so frustrated. And I was like, I remember the first time going through this where I'm just trying to tell myself circle of center, circle of center, circle of center. You know, what's weird is um, I think it was just last year that Japan changed the standard of that. You did they? They Americanized it. Yeah, they they're like, okay, now we're wow. gonna make X B okay and Circle B cancel on all future games. Like it's some. I remember it was some kind of announcement, and I was like, why? Like who cares? Like yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I know it fucks you up, German, but like in a switch happens in my brain once I know what game I'm in, and I'm just like, this this is the controller scheme now in my in my head. That's why I always give you shit when you're when you're like. You know, you have your... I can't it, customize it or whatever. Yeah, so you have your scuff, and you're like, I, I just want to play, you know, with the extra buttons in the back paddle, and I get that, having extra buttons and everything, um, but I think, I think I'm just like a controller purist, like, obnoxiously, and I'm just like, hey, man, if you can't play with the default controllers, you suck, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't use the scuff, but but then I but then I think the same way. Uh-huh. I don't think the same way with keyboard and mouse. You know, I'm like, oh, I should be able to customize every fucking key that I want. Like, why can't I? You know, and th- and that does drive me nuts in some games uh, with the controller, where it's like, here's a controller scheme instead of map the controls however you want in yeah, game. Yeah. Like, if the game lets you map them out, then I'm like, cool, do whatever you want. But when it's like a ski- uh, style B, style C, you know, and, it's and this game does that. If you go in the options, Does there's it, like I've three styles, played. which I've, I've n- yeah, I've never changed them. I probably, sh- I probably should um, maybe this next week when I'm playing again, I- I'm going to see what the other control schemes are like now that we're talking about them. But like, what, what even are those other schemes? Like what, what is the game going to feel like changing all that? Yeah. But anyways, yeah. So you found the code in the manual or in the picture that you found online? I saw it on the manual but i didn't like use that information so i actually looked at the uh in the manual i'm sorry i saw it in the picture i saw online did i say that you I said you looked up a, you said you looked up a picture but you were like why did like why did yeah. i send you the manual so you were looking yeah so I, I looked up a picture to see like is it hidden somewhere like because because that's what i half expected it was like it's it's in the middle of like some other text or something like the copyright date or something like and it, it happens to be like hidden in there so i was like where is it? Where like I don't I'm not seeing it immediately, and I so I looked up a picture to see like where it was, and it had like circled and zoomed in where it was, and I was like, no, that's not hidden anywhere. And I went back to the thing you had sent me, and I was like, it's not here. Um, but then once you told me like it's listed in there, like in the in the codec calls area, it's like, oh okay, so that's where I actually got the the information. Oh, okay. Like I saw where it was. I didn't like look to see what the actual uh, frequency was until I looked through the manual. I'm glad the game has you overanalyzing things because yeah. <laughs> that is not the wrong way to approach this entire series. Yeah. Just, I mean, the, the you know, Metal Gear Solid, no, no, sorry, Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake definitely trained you with that, with the whole, you know, Marv's codec frequency. It's upside down or some shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like that was definitely something that I wouldn't have thought that game back in the day would do. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember that part, and I was like, "Oh, this is just like the Meryl thing." <laughs> yeah, literally, but like way, but way more obscure. Like, mm-hmm. um, the Meryl thing is just like it, they're telling you, but your brain yeah. is like the thing you just gave me. And the weird thing is that he says yes. the frequencies on the back of the CD case yes. before he hands you the optical disc, and that's the big clue is that it's at that point your brain should already be like of the game. But your brain doesn't do that. You kind of go yeah. like, what CD case? And then later he hands you an optical disc and you're like, oh, this must be the thing he's talking about. Mm-hmm. But 
I feel like that's everybody's everybody's um train of thought you know that's just it's natural it's like what is he talking about oh this thing he just handed me yeah and then you spent hours kind of <laughs> equipping unequipping <laughs> how do i look at this thing you know and it's in the era of resident <laughs> evil so like you want to like there's got to be an examine button somewhere you, mm-hmm. you know speaking of resident evil i don't know if it's the limitations of the playstation or if i know it's two different companies kept common konami yeah but but there's plenty of like art uh, art sets or whatever your background drops and all that stuff the ape just screams resident evil <laughs> yeah uh, uh, just the, the the textures and i'm like god damn like, am I, are they this is this the same person that made these games or what man it yeah. just like I said i just i just felt again maybe playstation graphics but i was like this looks like metal uh metal uh resident evil you know so yeah yeah and and especially some um I think I don't. I don't think they happen this early in the game, but later on in the game, there's some camera angles that are like very uh, Resident Evil cinematic type of camera angles where you're like, oh, okay, that's a cool camera position. It like <laughs> totally makes me think of Resident Evil because those are static. You know, they're not real 3D environments. They're just pre-rendered, and there's 3D geometry that makes it look like you're walking on these pictures, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so so you called Meryl, flirt with her a bit, then you well first you swap sweep her off her feet, and then bring yeah. her right back down <laughs> you know you 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 misogynistic and then immediately patronizing to her <laughs> yeah. did you um so when you went back into the tanker hanger is that what it's called yeah the tanker hanger mm-hmm. or tank hanger i'm guessing you found the box because you found it in this stream that you were playing earlier yeah did you oh quick question how did you get into into the tank hanger did you go the vent on the second floor or on the vent on the first floor Originally, I went to the first floor. I, th- I think it was the first. Yeah, pretty sure it was the first floor. Right by the camera. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then I came out, and I think one of the guards had spotted me like immediately. So I went back in, and then went back up to the second floor and came out there. Okay, so quick thing: if you go through the bottom vent, I think I'm I'm wondering if Kojima was doing a quick little reference to Snake's Revenge. With because the underwater part? Yes, with the underwater oh, part. Yeah. I was like, oh, like I got flashbacks of Snake's Revenge. I was like, holy shit. I, I would have, <laughs> you know, if I'd never played this game, of course, I never would have like this immediate like, oh, I don't like this. But um, yeah. And then um, I think I think Colonel Campbell or Miller tells you like, follow the rats. Get Miller, I believe. Is it Miller? Yeah. So yeah. so if you call Miller after you call him the first time or after he calls you. He'll tell you that he's like follow the rats, like that. You know they'll probably lead you th- to the right way out and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on, touching base on Miller or, or Codec calls. I forgot, and I like that um, important Codec calls are forced on you. you yes, because um, yeah. like you know, playing all these last four games, there's very important Codec calls that if you, like especially Snake's Revenge, if you weren't standing on the right fucking pixels, you couldn't pick up those goddamn calls. <laughs> you know, so it was very annoying. And, and and on this one, I remember kind of going into it, and then when you get that first, like, forced one, you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. When it's story-related or important, like, Snake will automatically pick it up. That's cool. I remember that. Yeah. And and I think it is funny that, that water, I went through there myself, and because that's the way I always go. It hit me. Like, that's the only part that has water. There's no other freaking vents or yeah that 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 has water so i keep forgetting chris hasn't played the full game so i gotta be careful not to spoil a lot but but <laughs> but, but it's a it's a very um it's a very metal gear thing there's a lot of one-offs you know mm-hmm. what i mean there's a lot of things that you only do once normal video games don't do that they're like here's a mechanic we're going to teach you that you're going to use later in the game yeah, and then you use it for a boss and then going forward, yeah. you'll use it to unlock more shit like but metal like, gear's no. like <laughs> here's you know you're going to do this once and then you'll never think about it again and it's like we're gonna Whoa. teach you how to use nikita missiles and then that's it yeah yeah you'll never <laughs> use them again so but if you go through the second vent the the second floor uh, vent a certain door opens actually in the tank hanger it does not open if you go through the first floor so on the second floor there are two doors there is the top right door which you can't get in until you get level two card mm-hmm. and then there's another door that has no level key cards so it only opens if you go through that vent on the second floor, and in there you get the thermal goggles. Hmm. Did you find those, Chris? Yes. Okay. So yeah. So lucky you. You decided to go back up through the second floor because that's the only way to get them at that point in the game. I think yeah, you get them later, right? Because that was that's yeah. the room where you go in, and there's the ca- there's just a camera in there, right? Yeah, and there's like crates. To, yep. Yeah, I found that. Yep, I remember yeah. that. Okay. So you called Meryl. 
how'd you fare in the um oh wait sorry and then there's also did you find the suppressor on the first floor yes uh okay. that was that the one that was like in the center of the no that was a uh, ammunition i think it was because there's that that like helipad in the center and there's a the searchlights uh was that where the suppressor was no no that's outside that's- that's chaffs, isn't it? Or stun grenades, one or the other. Outside oh, is right. the chaffs. Yeah. The gun is in the truck. And then the first stun grenades are in the first room that it's like surveillance camera. Oh, that yeah. yeah. You use chaffs yeah. to get that one. That's right. Yeah. You okay. you don't know how to get that without the chaffs? <clears throat> uh, just sneak by it, right? Yeah, you can just press against, up against yeah, the, yeah. The, the, what's it called? The container. But yeah, suppressor is, is still inside the same tank hanger, but it's in the first floor in the, in the, um, right next to where the lasers are. To the oh right. yeah okay and there's just one dude there and if you haven't alerted anybody he's asleep yeah that's right yeah, yeah. he, he I didn't feels get that. asleep I, I won't lie I, I didn't yeah he feels asleep <laughs> i didn't get that until <laughs> way later because i was just kind of yeah like he was really always exploring. awake for me yeah my well, first time i was like this guy fucking never <laughs> well how do i get by, by this guy yeah no because like i said for me i didn't i didn't wasn't exploring because i didn't want to explore because i didn't need to explore i knew where to go i need I know what I need, and suppressor's not an item you need, technically, you know? Yeah. So I was like, yep, I gotta get Nikitas. Yep, I gotta get, you know, C4. It's just, once I got the item I need, I just kept going. And it wasn't until, like, later in the game when you had had to go backwards. And uh, I was kind of like, oh, I'm gonna go open all the doors that didn't open up. And I was like, oh, well, there's the fucking thermal. Oh, there's the fucking suppressor. I'm like, oh, there's the cardboard box. Too late now. I don't fucking need it. Yeah. Speaking, Speaking of that, Chris, did you, you did you find all the walls that you can explode? I think so because there's I I remember today when I was playing I tried to get them all because there's the room you open up to go to Ocelot and to the right of that there was another one you could explode mm-hmm. and I thought I had set a C4 down there as well and I don't know if it was game limitations or if it glitched or what but I set one down by the one by where Ocelot was. And I set one down by the wall to the right, thinking, mm-hmm. okay, I can explode them both at the same time. But it only did the one for Ocelot, and then I was out of C4. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I did hear you say that, yeah. But, yeah, I've I, I been in there, and that was I think that was the room where the uh, like the machine guns or something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the auto turrets. Yeah, and that, so that took me a while to get through and figure out and everything. I don't remember if I went back with card two to look through there or okay. later. I don't think I did. So I won't say that there is or isn't more walls beyond that okay but uh maybe there is i will keep an eye out now (laughs) um how did you fare in the gas room that was a little more difficult for me just because like at first i was like i don't have a gas mask and so i i like backtracked everywhere i'd gone before looking like did i miss it did i skip over it somehow like where is it and i could not find it and so i was like well i'll just try to like like bull just push my way through Mm -hmm. you know and the gas mask was in there i was like you gotta be kidding me what (laughs) wait what yeah Yeah, the gas mask was was in the uh with that first room on the right i think it was so yeah you use the nikita oh wait wait wait. so 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 sorry not that gas room sorry the laser room oh oh the laser room yeah uh so that that tripped me up at first and actually, it happened again today, too. The The first laser room I came across was ba- basement floor two. Oh, uh, right, where you get the yeah, FAMAS. Yeah, yeah. So I, I walked in there, and I saw the red, and I didn't think anything of it. And I go through, and it's like, alert, alert. And I was like, what? What What alerted? And then I was like, oh, <laughs> there's probably lasers there or something. And uh, so I, you know, I think I probably ended up dying or ran out or something. And I came back, and I was like, oh, wait, I have my... Uh, those goggles to see lasers. So I put those on and sure enough, it shows them. So I said, Oh, it's like midway. So I'll crawl under it and did that. Got the weapon and the, the ammo and crawled back out. And then, uh, yeah, there's that second room. And I remember you get the Kodak, call, you get the Kodak call as you go in, but I had stepped like one step too oh. far <laughs> when the Kodak call came in. And I was like, Oh, I'll answer that. And then of course it alerted. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> then I ran out and I, I got shot and everything, of course. And then I the second time I went in there. Were you able to like, get out in time? No, I, I died. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah. say, I was like, that door closes. Like, there's no yeah, way to get no, out of they, there. <laughs> they, yeah, they gassed me and I died, yeah. So, yeah, the second time I went in, I was like, okay, go real slow. Just like in Solid, or, yeah, Solid Snake, when you go in those rooms and the, the puddle of acid is right there. Uh, I was like, okay. Walk in slowly, take your time. As soon as the Kodak call comes in, answer it. And then he's like, oh, 
there's lasers here. You have to, you know, dodge them or whatever. So I was like, okay. So I put on the goggles and it still took me a few times to get past it to get the timing right and everything. Because his perspective is a little weird, yeah. right? It's hard yeah. if it's up, exactly. up or down, but yeah, you have to look pretty close. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Because um, I remember one of them was like, I had waited too long at one point. And it was coming back down and caught me. And then one time I like went too soon and it was, I had like tripped it just with my head or whatever. I was like, dang it. Uh, but I, it, it didn't take me too long. I think it was like three tries or something, three or four tries Okay. Um, before I was able to get through that. So yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. When, um, when I used to go through that room, I didn't know about the thermals because um, I, I would, I guess I, I went through the bottom before, before I learned mm-hmm. about the thermals and stuff. And I would, um, I would crawl. <laughs> And it, and it works because your hitbox is only so it, it doesn't it's your legs aren't part of your hitbox for some reason. So you're able to just kind of like do it. And I was always scared of that room. I was just like, I can't get through this like the right way and whatever. And you didn't use cigarettes back then? But, yeah, but that's the only way I could do it. because Oh, I didn't but, know. oh you would crawl with the cigarettes. Yeah, I would crawl with the cigarettes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when I started learning about the thermals, I would use the thermals. But then, like you said, the perspective kind of fucks with you. And you're like, mm-hmm. which one is in front of me? Which one's yeah. behind me? Or which one's moving up and which one's moving down sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. So, so I think, I thought you were, I, I, I wanted to just touch, I thought you were just crawling and just freaking getting lucky. Oh, with that. man. <laughs> I was like, damn, no. dude. That'd be insane. No, you definitely trip them if you crawl and you hit them. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've found the best strategy is cigarettes and just walking because yeah. you can see right. which one's in front of you. Um, it ignores okay. the one behind you. But yeah, it didn't, it didn't take me too long to get through that. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, because nowadays if I use the thermals, it still fucks with me. Definitely caught me off guard the first time, like I said, when I tripped the alarms. I was like, what? What happened? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was just a pixel too far when I answered that Kodak call and it already tripped. I was like, oh, okay, I'm dead. <laughs> Who calls you? It remind me. Is it, Um, I don't want to spoil nothing, but I, well, I won't spoil anything. I don't remember. It's not Natasha, is it? Well, well I'm not spoiling anything. Is it Deep Bro? Who calls you? I honestly don't remember. What What's crazy is like, we're, me and Luis are supposed to be experts here and stuff, but it's kind of like, <laughs> we kind of just, at least my, I just kind of go through it because I, I know where to go and what to do. But I'm like, details that I take for granted, I kind of forget. That's why I'm like, who the fuck calls you? I, I want to say, I think you know, it can't be deep through because I think he calls you in the next little, little, the next door with the mines. Yeah. I think Luis might have been get disconnected. His uh, thing on the V-band is is not green anymore yeah i think he's probably mute for now or something maybe um but yeah no it was uh it was interesting like i like i said i i the one the first time i went through and i was just a pixel too far and i tripped it and i was like crap and then uh yeah i remember answering that call afterwards and i was like oh okay that makes sense it was interesting uh i like I liked having little things like that where it's like, well, like, like you had said too, like it's, it's nice that they're doing important calls to you instead of like, nope, we're going to make you try to figure out who to call and when to call them and all that kind of stuff. It's like, okay, that's, that's a quality of life improvement that I think was desperately needed. Yeah. Well, well like you say, cause even in the other game, like you would get those calls, you'd be like, code it, call, call, or call, whatever the fuck you would show. And uh, like I said, if you didn't push in time or if you're, or, you know, if you moved a few pixels over you couldn't pick up the call anymore and i was mm-hmm. i was i remember just getting annoyed with that back in the day um not sh- um i wanted to just talk about though unless i'm wrong and the ninja does come out during ocelot i'm pretty sure yeah because there's that invisible guy that like cuts off his hand yeah oh did, did i does he not reveal himself to be a ninja there i he does. don't think so i does thought he? he i thought that to swear he takes off his camo and then uh Ocelot says, like, it can't be, like, or what are you doing here, or something like that, and then... No, because he asked the one guy, he's like, who is that? What was he doing? And he's like, you don't know? And then he, like, I think that's when he starts to die or something, or I don't know. I just played it earlier today, so I should know, but I do not remember. I, I can swear that he, he freaking takes off his camo and reveals himself, like, I'm a, doesn't tell you who he is or nothing like that, just you see him. Is that what, that's what I'm trying to get at. I don't... I think it shows like a vague outline of him, but I don't think it's like he reveals himself. Really? And, okay. And like so that, yeah. really, okay, hold on. I'm going to have to look this up now because, um, I, 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 I must be having a Mandela effect. <laughs> um, because I can swear to hope I'm, that hopefully it doesn't blast you right now with the volume. Come in, blah, blah, blah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He freaking, you kill, you kill fucking ninja. My modem is unreachable in scope. Ooh, damn. I'm guessing that's a uh, Comcast thing. No, that's a Spectrum thing. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
some probably system issue or something. Gonna reboot it. Okay. Hello. Hey. Welcome back. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Just <laughs> flipped out, huh? I was fucking talking to myself like I'm hearing German saying these things and I'm like, no, it's Meryl. <laughs> Meryl is the one who's calling on the on the codec. On uh, uh, where? The... In the laser room. Did she call us the first time? Yes. She calls in the laser room. Nothing just happened, guys. Don't even worry about it. Hmm. Audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. We'll cable, edit this out. Cable guy had uh, cable problems. <laughs> <laughs> Cyborg Ninja calls once you get through the laser room to warn you about the claymores. Yeah, yeah. He calls you for the claymores. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I vaguely remember that. Okay. Um. So I don't remember how much further you guys were talking. I was trying to deal with other shit. The, that codec call, did it at all sound weird to you? Like he was calling himself Deep Throat and shit? Weird as in how? Are you talking to me or Chris or both? Uh, Chris, because I know you okay. know what's going on. <laughs> uh, okay. Not really. It it sort of reminded me of, from the, the second game, uh, Solid Snake, of I'm your biggest fan. So I think that's kind of what came to mind, was that there's someone on the inside who is a quote-unquote enemy, but they're also trying to help me in some way. Oh, okay. Um, but otherwise it didn't. It didn't really set off any alarms per se. Gotcha. So okay. So so a foe, but pros- possibly also a friend. Yeah, similar to Gray Fox and yeah, gotcha. Solid Snake. Yeah. Okay. Um. So here is the second boss, German. Mm-hmm. This is the next boss. You were already skipping on to. But but no no I wasn't skipping. Okay, hold on. I, let me just touch base real quick. Yeah. I wasn't talking about the boss fight. I was talking about the fact that boss like his hand chopped off by this entity that's all i was just talking about oh um, oh okay 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 yeah yeah, yeah and that's, that's that's what i was thinking too i was like he didn't skip a boss fight did he like i know i fight him i later, literally but... thought you were jumping to the the last fight that chris has had in the, no. in the lab that's <laughs> what i was like what we're literally skipping over our boss no 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 because I, I, and, and 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 that's not wrong uh, but i'm i'm literally watching the uh the, the cutscene here on, on youtube there is a face reveal so unless the hd version does it and the other ones don't I don't, I don't no, know. No, there is no face reveal. What are you talking about? Oh, okay. Not face. I'm sorry. Decamo. An uncamoed oh, ninja. Okay. Like, okay. you just. My, my, my question to Chris was the first impressions of, like, this freaking robot cool looking. Thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that's all it, what it was. I wasn't, like, yeah. gonna, gonna talk about who or what he is. But but nonetheless, um, yeah, as Meryl calls you, you're right. She tells you, Snake, be careful. There's some lasers, some bullshit like that. And then right after that, you get that call from Deep Throat. Can can I say something about Deep Throat? That's not spoiler. It's just a trivia, at least in my opinion. From the Watergate scandal? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, when when if you're not there yet on your second playthrough, Chris, or if you want to look at the the, the the videos of it, in the codec call, the voice sounded super goddamn familiar to me. And I was like, that voice sounds so fucking familiar that I, I Google searched the cast, and at least from what I'm getting, it's actually um the the actor, the voice actor. And, and I got to go back and, and I want to, and, and it's only on the, the codec call because when you talk to the ninja himself, it does not, doesn't sound the same in my opinion. It's a uh, fucking Grimm from the brother, uh, what is it, Billy and Mandy, Adventures of Grimm. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, you know what? Um, The, so the voice cast, all the names in this version, they're all stage names mm-hmm. um, because the uh, Actors Guild did not allow them to work with their actors guild names like their whatever names they're using there um on this game officially so they had to change all their names so huh. revolver like it it tells you the actor name below when they introduce them right it's like revolver ocelot yeah. played by patrick lane or whatever and solid snake by david hater so that he's actually the only one who um has his real name in the credits so solid snake voiced by david hater which will become an important thing, Chris, okay. throughout the entire series. David Hayter is actually, he's actually a screenwriter who, um, he wrote the first two X-Men movies, uh, the screenplays, and also the screenplay for Watchmen. If you've ever seen Watchmen, um, he's responsible for that as well. Okay. He's done a bunch of other stuff too, but that's what he's mostly known for is the first two X-Men movies and Watchmen. So I don't, so I don't know who you guys, who you're talking about, German. The, so, the voice actor? Yes. Uh, according to Wiki, it's uh, Greg Eagles. Um, okay, yes, has, I do know that name. Yeah, he also has a couple other names. He's credited as Greg um, Eels. And uh, but who's and the character that he that you are referring that he's 
because I've never watched whatever it is that you're saying. Oh, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. You ever seen that show on Cartoon no, Network? No, I've never seen that. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, um, I wasn't a Car- Cartoon Network kid because I didn't have those channels. Uh, like I have this conversation with, with Jesse all the time. Like she, she had Cartoon Network living with you, of course, cause she's your sister. I, I had like Nickelodeon was like the highest I got, you know, like Nickelodeon and MTV. So I didn't get Cartoon Network. That was uh, too uh, high, too high on the numbers. <laughs> I, I think, I think it was channel 50, I believe. Um, yep. Channel 50. It, yeah. It's, it's just a character from Billy and Mandy's a cartoon, which I, it's, it's fine. I just didn't think I was big into it, but point being is I, I just thought it was funny that if you if you ever get a chance just compare the two voices like Billy and Mandy and then only on the codec call you know deep throat codec call and it's like holy shit it's the same fucking character <laughs> okay cool cool I'll do that yeah so how'd you do with this uh this tank boss <laughs> <laughs> and did you figure out what you had to do <laughs> uh it took me a while uh I eventually did figure it out I the grenades thing I figured out pretty quickly um, because I'm I'm starting to learn with this game that some of the context clues are the types of ammo or the supplies that are around. Right. And so one of the first things I noticed is, oh, it gave me grenades, so I must have to use grenades. And I had no idea how to figure out where the the mines were or whatever. Mm, uh-huh. So I would just be walking around and, pff, oh, okay, I took damage. <laughs> so you didn't and have then, the mine detector. Pff, okay, I'm dead. I do not know. Okay. I I. Could have sworn I checked everywhere for it, but I could not find it. Do you want to know where it is? Part of me says no, so I'll, I'll try to go look for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, <laughs> cool. That's good. <laughs> but, yeah, it was just one of those things where I just kept hitting that. And I, then I started to figure out, like, okay, if I hug the wall, I don't hit the mine. So I started doing that, and I was able to avoid those, for the most part, pretty Does easily. Does that work? Yeah, it worked for me. If you go along the left side and you hug that wall, you don't hit any mines. Any? Like, even, even after... Even, There's one you, mine right there. That's crazy. Yeah. I wow. miss it apparently. I don't know. <laughs> no, I've never tried that. So all right. I mean, I just learned something. We just. I mean, at least I think you do what I do. Noise. I didn't made it there without the mine detector because I, like I said, I didn't care to go look for anything because yeah. you can just. Uh, should I tell him? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was yes. thinking about. It, I was like, mm, yeah. Let's. Did you did did you even do that in Metal Gear Solid or in Metal, Metal Gear, Gear 2? Two Solid Snake? Yes, you do. Yeah. So if he can so, make okay. that connection. I know. I know what it is then. You oh. crawl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I thought about doing that, but I was like, in the second one, you had to have the mine detector. Because even that I got I got tripped up on. Like, it shows you where the mines are and everything. But it, I didn't, like, look at the radar first. I'm thinking, like, oh, it'll show me on the map like it did the first game. And yeah. it didn't. And then I start walking and all these explosions start going off. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> and I looked up at the map and I see all these white dots. And I was like, oh. And I looked at the walkthrough and I was like, yeah, you have to crawl over them. I was like, that's dumb, but okay. So I'd crawl over them thinking like you pick them up and you add to your minds. But no, it's just you just pick no. them up and that's it. Yeah, it goes in your in your inventory. It oh, does it? Okay. It does. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, Solid yeah. Snake, I, yeah. Okay. That's, that's how you, I mean, because I don't think in Solid Snake there was like items that you picked up to get the mines like i think it's the ones that you pick up from the ground that you can use against the bosses i don't remember but i know i had a shitload of mines because that's what i use for every boss so. yeah from that desert okay. spot that's where i got them <laughs> for the running man <laughs> okay but yeah so the fastest man alive <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that, that was funny as hell but yeah going back to this game um with the second boss it took me a while to figure it out because there's that there's that one area like the top right corner where mm-hmm. there's like a water tower or something mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I can stand behind here and he can't reach me. Uh-huh. But then you're also <laughs> stuck there. So yeah. it's like, crap, what do I do? And so I remember like I, I would lob grenades and run back and hide there and it would explode and, and he wouldn't take any damage. So I'd lob another grenade and explode and it wouldn't take any damage. So I was like, okay, maybe it's not grenades. Maybe it's C4. So I set down a piece of C4 and I would run back there and I'd have like one hit left because he's hitting that the whole time. And I'm like, crap. So I'd, I'd wait for him on the, the radar to go over it. And I would explode it. And again, no damage. And I was like, I, I got to be missing something here. What's going on? And so I, I kept trying, kept trying, kept dying, kept dying, dying, dying. This one, I probably died like 10, 12 times. Easy. Yeah. Until quite by accident, I was like right next to him. And I lobbed a grenade and I noticed it went inside of it. And I was like, oh. It makes that little sound. Yeah. That little clink sound or something. Yeah. And so I ran off and exploded and he comes out with his little machine gun and... And I was like, okay, so I'll try that again. 
and I lobbed it again, but he was out with his machine gun and shot me dead. So I was like, crap, okay. And then I remember thinking like, okay, I have these chaff grenades too, and they disrupt electronics. So I'll try that. And uh, so I tried that and sure enough, it you know, everything goes all green and sparkly and stuff. And, and uh, he wasn't aiming at me. So I was like, okay. So I used that and I ran up next to the grenade and, or next to the tank, threw a grenade in and, and he comes out again, yells, Aah! whatever he does. And, and then I ran, went and hid and lobbed another chaff grenade and it all went green and sparkly and threw another one. When I, when I was able to figure that out, I think the second time after that, I was able to beat him, but it, it took me a little while to figure that out. The, to use the chaff grenade to disable the like the aiming system or whatever and then lob the grenade inside and actually there was one time that i remember the tank was turning and just caught my ankle and i died <laughs> oh my god yeah it's one of those auto deaths so i was like you gotta be kidding me gosh dang it i gotta watch out for that <laughs> so yeah but uh it was it took me a little while to figure out but i did eventually figure out okay you gotta lob the grenades inside and I to this day I or this to this time I do not know what the exact mechanics are so I don't know if it's like you have to be next to the tank or if you have to be within a certain range of it or what it is but it's just like I just happened by chance like oh this is how it works and that's what I need to do so is it timed is it how long you you kind of, or how hard you press the button that lobs it further I I, don't, I have no idea like I said <laughs> so I learned this recently um, from watching speed runs, you know, because they, ex- they ex- th- that's a good thing about speed runs is they explain everything, right? They're yeah, like, yeah. in this section, this works a certain way. So in the tank battle, this is the only spot in the game where the longer you hold, the longer okay. you cook the grenade, the, the further it it'll go. Yeah. It's the only spot in the game that does oh, that. Nowhere okay. else in the game will you throw it that far. Mm. Like you'll just cook it like normal and then throw it you know, five feet in front of you or, or however far he's throwing it, like 10 feet. Yeah. But in the tank battle, it is the longer you throw it or the longer you hold it, the further it goes. Okay. So it's not particularly useful when you're speed running because you want that thing to fall as close to you. And it more, like, Yeah, because if you, if you throw it close to you, you're more precise in throwing it into that one little hole. Yeah. And if you're like holding it for days, by the time you're like, okay, I finally lined up my throw you're gonna fucking throw it over him um so if that happened to you chris then that that's that's why that happens is because it's now now it's measuring distance while you're uh, cooking okay. it so you were probably just tapping it without holding it until you that could be yeah which is the best way you know like maybe cook it like two seconds but like yeah like because i have my muscle memory and that's why i was wondering i'm like is it how long you press it or, or how hard you press it because i have my little routine where i kind of kind of like the ocelot fight where you kind of do these little circles and i guess those circles are just the right amount of cook time for me yeah, to get yeah. it into that that hole you know same yeah okay but but i think it's um i think it's funny that the the level designers really um did a great job here because when chris described the little water tire on the top right yeah all these memories rushed into my brain and i was like that's <laughs> where i went the first time when i was Same. playing here <laughs> yep Same. and then and then <laughs> that's the safest spot to go but then you're stuck just like chris then you're yeah. fucking stuck and you're like okay well i guess i'm fucking gonna get blasted yeah and so i think everyone's experience with with the tank battle which is even speedrunners when you watch them it's the same it's like you know cook it a couple seconds throw it but like you said chris it'll just catch your ankle and fucking knock you to the ground and yep. <laughs> then you're then you got to make sure he's not over you because if he's over you and you try to get up you'll take damage again so you kind of have to do like a like a monster hunter thing where like okay he's stay running down, over me yeah. stay down <laughs> i believe you can use mines and it'll like disrupt one of his treads so you can kind of yes it does move around you can do damage to the tank so yeah if the grenade if the grenade hits a different part of the of the tank a couple times you'll start slowing it down and he won't move as quickly. So uh, okay. I think you're right about mines and I think C4, C4 would also work. Yeah, if you put on the four. I'd never play with the C4, but yeah, I yeah. might might have might do the same thing. I, I wonder if like um if we had like Game Shark and we had, you know, more explosive weapons. Like in the trailer, ninety nine 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 nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you yeah, can you like fucking just start like Nikita missling this tank and stuff? Like will I it know. Do the same thing. We should try the Game Shark. Yeah. yeah. But uh I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it would do damage to the guy because those those missiles are like shoulder height. You know. Yeah. 
That yeah. So did you know? Yeah, go did ahead. Did you know that you can go into first person on the Nikita missile? Like the missile itself? Yeah. I did not. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Oh wait, I did know that. No, I didn't. Did I? <laughs> I don't think I'd know that. No. I I I used to, and I brought this up just because you said the Kina missile. And I remember I I used to love just going to the Kina missile and just going to first person view because. It's the only time, other than Integral now, apparently, that you could go into first person and kind of walk around the map, you know, if you will, quote unquote. Yeah. But before you get to that, mm-hmm. after the, so, sec, after second boss, now you're in the um, the waste disposal oh, building. yeah. How'd you have fun in there without weapons? All you had was chaff grenades. Oh. I always hated that fucking room. You thank you for reminding me how much I hate that guy. Yeah. Oh <laughs> I used gosh. to hate it, but now I have my route. Now I'm like, uh, yeah. nope, I always go this way. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember that well, but now that you mentioned like losing the weapons and everything, I do remember that. It it, it would piss me off because it was like, you can't use any weapons in there, but they can. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, they can. They yeah. can totally blow up the whole place. What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, because it's something about like, oh, well, we pre-programmed the nano machines to not allow it. Like, yeah, what are these controlling me? Like, what? <laughs> oh yeah, you'll yep. we'll find out about nano machines. Yeah, this is when uh, kind of na- the the potential for nano machines is definitely um, introduced here. Yeah, and and this is also the first time that they talk about Nastasha Romanenko, um, which I think is the reason why they renamed. Natasha from Solid Snake to Gustava because in the original Japanese version her name is Natasha okay. and it was probably too close. Yeah, um, I did mention and this. Yeah. yeah, I did mention this um, on the Solid Snake episode. Uh, I was like, okay, I think this is why they changed it. But I yeah, do remember um, you saying that. Yeah. So the reason they introduce her is, um, did you call her at all? I'm pretty sure I did because she's the one that tells you why you can't use your gun, right? Or was that someone else? No, Naomi says why. She, cause, okay. you know, she tells you about the nano machines, but they do give you the frequency, which I'm pretty is sure I did call her one four one point five two, if I'm not mistaken. And so, if you call her the first time, she, you know, is like, "Hey, I'm glad to be part of the mission," and fuck these terrorists and snakes. Like, oh, you're a tough. Li-. It oddly enough, she's the only one he doesn't hit on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, you're right. Yeah, he doesn't hit on her. He's just you're like, right. you're a tough lady. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, someone has to stand up to these terrorists. But her her um, purpose in the game is actually to explain weapons. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, she's yeah, a weapon specialist. Yeah. Right. So if you're holding an item or a weapon in your hand and you call, she'll explain to you what that weapon is. Okay. And you can actually call her as soon as you leave the very first elevator at the beginning of the game because her frequency is in the manual. And she's okay. also, I think she's also mentioned in the she's mission mentioned. briefing, mm-hmm. which I don't know if you went through that because I know I, I, I mentioned you can just watch those also. There's yeah. a lot of useful information there. But they mention her in that. And so, yeah, so you can from the beginning be like, what is this thing? And they're like, oh, this is a chaff grenade and blah, 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 blah. And this is how it works. And this is the SOCOM and all that stuff. So, but yeah, um, how did, uh, how many times you set off the gas in that room? Uh, is there a way to not set off the gas in there? Because I didn't find a way not to. <laughs> well, by not getting caught. Yeah. If you don't get caught, there's no gas. You talking about in the room where you use the Nikita? No, 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 no. no, no. So the, the sorry. <laughs> I forget that there's multiple rooms of gas. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, in the, in the in the disposal facility. Oh, or yeah. Room, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure I didn't set it off. Oh, not, wow. Really? You didn't get caught once in that room? If I remember correctly, I could be wrong. I'll have to replay that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure every most of the time I got caught, I would die. Okay, because because if you do manage to get out of their field of view and the alarm system resets, then the gas goes away in that room. Okay, but otherwise, yeah, if you're still in their in their field of view and they're chasing you, Doesn't that gas the, will keep going. The gate closes too, right? Yeah, and then you can't yeah. get out of that fucking gate. <laughs> which yeah. which now that you mention that, it's cracked open. Yeah. So they know it's cracked open. <laughs> Why not just close it? Like <laughs> they can clearly yeah. close it when you're in there, <laughs> but they don't close it before you get in there. Very and odd. They're all, and they're all wearing like uh, full blown hazmat suits. Yeah, they're prepared for the gas before the gas. Yeah, exactly. It's always kind of okay. Yeah. Sure. So they they know. Um, yeah, I'm well, I'm pretty sure I made it through there without setting off the alarm then, because I do not remember any gas in that area. So oh, okay, um, nice. So then when um. Deep Throat calls you again. Did you know where to look for the Nikita or were you already exploring the the first floor basement before you got to the second floor basement? I was 
already pretty much exploring is that where you go in you go in the elevator and then there's like the big room in front of you almost like a big conference room that has computers in it and there's like rooms to the side mm -hmm. yeah that's go first to floor the basement. right that's the first floor blame okay yeah so that was the room where I found I discovered something interesting about this game versus the previous ones and that if you kill the people that are down there they do not respond okay right yeah I think I think is that the only room where that happens? It's the only room I've noticed it so far. I don't know if it happens everywhere else too. Um, yeah, like today when I, was... I, I think I think they don't keep coming in this game. They just they yeah. If you if you manage to kill everyone in the room, that's it. Like they're gone yeah. until you reload the room. I guess. Well, even when I would like walk out and walk back in, um, unless I moved the unless I went in the elevator and came back down. Yeah, that's up. what I mean by reloading. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so I thought that was interesting because I remember like sneaking around and someone caught me. I was like, crap, I got to shoot him. And so I shot him and I was like, I'm like hiding and I'm like, okay, I know someone else is going to come out because the alarm strip. And then the other guy came out because I went, uh, it was the guy in the bathroom that had, I had first alar alerted. Did you watch him pee? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I, I came back down right outside the bathroom. There's that little like column there you can hide behind. Mm -hmm. And so I was behind that and I saw the other guy come out of the room uh, and come to my way and then I killed him and I'm like okay there's gotta be more right and then the the countdown started going the little thing like oh you've you've hidden and I was like what how did I there's no way I beat all of them and so I I was like really cautiously like sneaking around like there's you know someone's gonna come out of that room any second now they're gonna catch me blah 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 and I'm walking near it and I'm not seeing any red dots and I was like that's really odd where did he go and so I'm like looking all over the place and I didn't see them. So that's when I put together like, did I actually kill them all? And there's not just going to respawn like that's cool. So I did that every time I went down there so I could just freely explore and not have to worry about like sneaking around and, and alerting or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I would always go into the bathroom, kill that guy first and then hide behind that little tower there, the column, and then kill the other two guys. And I could just do whatever, you know. Mm. Um I never really thought about that, but you're right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because there's no other doors, if you will, or, uh, load zones other than elevator in that in that room. It could be, but like I think about like if if that happened in the tank hangar and you killed like the first time you're in there, there. Oh, there's only two guys in the tank hangar. Yeah. Or no, three because of the three. guy in the yeah the one the suppressor room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you kill them all, no more come. Like he's right. It's just it's so, just yeah. that we haven't. We haven't dealt with that in a while, so... Well, yeah, we don't really kill the people anymore. We just... <laughs> but he's right. Hey, they don't respond. Yeah. yeah. Or or there's no reinforcements or anything like that. Mm. Not like fucking Metal Gear 1 and 2 where, you know, uh, off, uh, off screen, they just are just responding, oh, just, coming yeah, yeah. in like a barrage of people. That's, yeah. that's not a thing in this game. I, for, I totally forgot about that. But yeah, so I, I use that to my advantage and I was just going everywhere looking at everything opening all the doors I could, and that's... So I found the Nikita missiles pretty easily. How'd you kill the guy in the bathroom? I just snuck up behind him and shot him. Mm -hmm. German, how are you actually supposed to kill the guy in the bathroom? How are you supposed to? Yeah. Put some C4 on him. That's right. Yeah, you put some C4 <laughs> on his back. <laughs> I C4. didn't even think about that. Yeah. I used to just choke him <laughs> to death, too. <laughs> so, yeah, so... I haven't done that in ages, but when I was playing the story mode this time on Sunday, on stream, I was like... check Because I was like trying to show all the Easter eggs possible. I was like, check this out. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, you can just walk up behind him. And I accidentally alerted him because I went fucking right in front of him. I was like, damn it, I fucked up. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you're if you're in the perfect distance, you just press, you know, to set a C4 and it'll put it on his back. Yeah, oh, that's funny. <laughs> and you could actually just leave him be and he'll walk away with that C4 still on his back. So you can <laughs> you can actually time it to where they're both like next to each other and just blow them both mm -hmm. up. Or put the wait for the next one. Put C four on his ass and blow both of them up in the yeah, room. Yeah, and for some reason, <laughs> yeah. as long as the door is closed, as long as the bathroom door is closed, and or or like there's a room between where there's a door between them. If you blow him up, the other guy is not alerted. Oh really? Okay. Um, but that. if they're in the same area or the yeah. door is open and they're just about and, the, and they're like like they like they really thought about like the sound or whatever like they're emulating. Oh, I heard a sound, yeah. but I don't know why they can't hear it through two doors. Like I would definitely hear a fucking explosion <laughs> two doors right? away. Well, yeah. yeah, that that whole explosion and guards being alerted. I, like I said, I, I tried to play this game without getting caught. I got caught because I was goofing around a lot. But yeah, it, it reminds me of uh, Metal Gear Two and and One and Sync Range and all those where there was times where uh, shooting the rockets or whatever or C four grenades would have freaking caused an alert. And then, like, four screens over, you're supposed to use C4 to blow up walls, but no one gets alerted on that one. And you're like, yeah, mm -hmm. pick, make up your mind game, you know? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, the the C four. I like I said, I usually would just choke him to death, just just, just because I didn't want to put the C four on him anymore. But I did what he's talking about. I put it on his back and let him walk around with it, and you know, <laughs> blow him at the set. You know, just the works. You know, I don't even um, know where we learned that. Like, how did where did we learn that? Who knows, honestly, man. Just I'm probably t- trial just, and just error. Just and error. I, I know if you put the C, uh, the claymore, it blows up instantly. Oh yeah, because it's because it as soon <laughs> it triggers, as it yeah yeah as soon as it disappears, it's just yeah. It's just an instant yeah explosion. I mean, the the only thing you could do is probably just put it in front of the sink because he goes over to wash his hands. Yeah. So that that'd be the only way. <laughs> There's. Uh... But yeah, you got you got to watch him pee, dude. He's all blurred out and everything. Yeah. He's he's, he's pixelated like The Sims. Like. Ugh. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so German was saying you so so you didn't go into first person at all with the Nikita. No. Okay. How many how many missiles did it take you? Uh, which time? <laughs> Total or no? It, it yeah to get to 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 destroy the electric uh, floor. It took me shoot probably a couple dozen. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so many. Well, well, the thing that like the thing that caught me off guard was it would start out at one speed. Yeah. And then the after boost. a second, it would just yeah, it would boost it. And like oh crap. And so, like, out of panic, I would try to steer it or whatever, and then, like, it would slow down again, and that kind of threw me off mm. um, because, like, I would steer it, like, thinking, like, okay, I'm going to turn it, and it's going to be, like, halfway across here now, so I have to turn it again. So that first corner, I kept, I kept like, doing a U-turn, like, constantly. So I remember, like, that was an issue, and I, was, I eventually got used to it, like, okay, if it starts to go too fast and I'm, I feel like I'm going to lose control, just, you know, flick the control one way and then back again. Yep. Just and it'll it'll forth. slow it right down. Mm-hmm. And so I started doing that. And then it was like, then it was an issue of crap. Where's that panel again? Like I couldn't remember yeah. what it was. <laughs> so like I first I would go like straight back and hit that back wall, and that it wouldn't work. So I was like, okay, I missed. So I'd go back a little further and then go to the right and then hit the wall right where the door is. And then like two times like those auto turret shot it yeah. down. And it was like, oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. And then eventually I was like able to get it back through that room turn to the right get through the door and then turn left again hit the back wall and got that panel and i was like yes finally and then i think i was going through and i didn't save um i was going through oh i went down i i went through those doors on the right and got the items there uh one of them being the gas mask and i kept going down and i went right and i didn't see the auto turret there at first and i was really low on health because the gas was you know affecting me or whatever and uh the auto turret got me and killed me and I was like, no, you got to be kidding yeah. me. I lost yeah. so much progress. <laughs> and, uh, but eventually got, I got through it all again and, and got everything. But yeah, it was just one of those things where I was like, no, I lost so much. Um, so I remember as soon as I broke, as soon as I got the panel the next time, I was like, okay, save state. Good. <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, but yeah. It, oh, you it took cheated. Me... Use the save state in this I game? I did. I did. In I this game? State. Yep. <laughs> actually speaking of we, we haven't touched on that the i guess the checkpoints when you continue how do you feel about these ones like, like when you die how much progress you lose compared to all the old, old games all the other games i genuinely do not remember that too well so i can't really comment it's, on it's that. really just it's just the broom it, pretty it, much okay kinda, yeah kind of just goes back that's to the broom. yeah okay yeah no it's it's that's yeah, right. it's definitely did, not yeah. like. Could could you imagine if it took you back to the elevator, uh, no matter where you were? Oh man, jeez. Uh, or yeah, or like the second you entered that particular building or something, like oh hell no. Yeah, no, very forgiving in this one. So and that's why I was surprised about the save state, Chris. What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> he, he just didn't want to deal with that turret. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that um the the rockets. That's a perfect spot to use the D pad. So if you were using joystick, D pad. I was. Definitely using D-pad, yeah. Yeah, it's like the best spot um, to, to be using that. I mean, you could with the joystick, which actually it gives you more control because since you're doing di- um, 360 degrees and you're like controlling it more, it keeps it at that slow speed. Okay. Um, As soon as you're not giving it a direction, hmm. that's when it does the boost. Because the rocket thinks like, oh, I'm pointed where you want me to go. So it does mm-hmm. a little boost. And then as soon as you start changing its direction, then it's like, oh, okay, you want me to slow down and... okay. You know, that's funny. You would think it would be like a manual button to boost versus I think you pointed me correctly. Let me auto boost. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. Like, I think for sure that was definitely intended. I think Kojima was like, it, it. this this needs to be a little bit of a challenge somehow because if you could Sure. Just, yeah, yeah. 
control it like the old ones where it's just one straight speed yeah which even those sometimes yeah. you would miss and you'd be like fuck you know, oh you're yeah like yeah half a pixel <laughs> off and you're like are you kidding me yeah. <laughs> you know I'll, I'll admit i forgot about the auto boost because i remember i launched my first one and that uh, you know i was going straight and it was like, phew, like oh shit and i'm like oh okay i forgot it does that i'm like okay yeah. cool <laughs> did you by any yeah. chance step on the floor before you shot your missile <laughs> i did not I did for fun. Do that next time, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll do that uh, for sure. It was a bit challenging, like I said, the one time where I actually broke it and then ended up dying. Um, I think that was one. I think there was twice that I used a save state in this. Uh, that time, and I do not remember the other time, but I think the other time was I had to like get up and go and do something, and it was a situation where it was like in the middle of a cutscene or something, yeah. And so I didn't have the opportunity to just, okay, let's wait for this to finish and then I'll continue afterwards. It was just like, I got through something. I need to go do something real quick right now. So instead of like just letting the save, the game sit here and, you know, first of all, me missing the cutscene and missing information. And then secondly, if the cutscene ends and I just die and now I'm reset back to before that, whatever it would be, you know, yeah. I did want to do that. So I was like, I'll just do this real quick and go. It's not so. until the third one, right, that you can pause? Or is it the fourth one that you can pause cutscenes? Jesus, I'm trying to remember. Um, I know the fourth one for sure, because it's like a process. Like, you, like, press start, and then it's like, skip cutscene? Um, but I don't know <laughs> if the third one does that. No, third one default is skip. S- okay, same. Okay. Yeah, straight up skip. Yeah, because Chris... So Chris today on his stream, when he was doing uh, the Ocelot fight on hard, <laughs> he kept watching the cutscene, and I was like... Does he know he can skip, skip cutscenes? And so I told him, <laughs> yeah. I was like, hey, you can skip cutscenes. And of course, that was the time where he beats <laughs> Ocelot. <laughs> and he's like, how do I skip cutscenes? And I'm like, press X, yeah. you know, like fucking sarcastically, like fucking X. What do you mean? Yeah, how do you so skip cutscenes? Like any button. So I, so I pressed X. And he pressed it on the new cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> the good thing is that he'd already played through that on normal, but yeah. like, <laughs> people in chat were like, restart the whole game so we can watch that cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Oh, Chris. Um, Classic damn it, Chris. So uh, were you creeped out at all once you finally got through that gas room and um, heard people getting murdered? I don't remember hearing that. Yeah, oh, so there's, yeah, like, there's like a little transition room that stops you, and then it's like, and then it's just like that's the right fuck yeah what was that and then it then it takes you into that hallway where there's a bunch all of the dudes people are and, dead yeah, yeah that's right i don't think i really put that together like i remember hearing the voices and i saw the dead bodies i must not have like it must not have connected for me like oh i just heard these people die or whatever so i i don't think that i necessarily like made that connection chris is um, a sociopath now yeah <laughs> yeah it's just murdering dudes I'm like whatever yeah but yeah now that you mentioned it he's like did i kill these guys i must have yeah (laughs) well i I figured the guy had killed them the one that we were following or whatever but i didn't make the connection like like i just heard them die kind of thing Mm. so but yeah no i i uh it was it reminded me of and i don't know if you've played final fantasy 7 or how far you've gotten uh the scene where you're in hojo's lab yes uh uh-huh very much and you remember that oh sephiroth's come back and blah 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 and you're following that trail of blood. Like, that's the first thing that popped in my head when I saw that was immediately oh, yeah. like, oh, crap. This is just like that kind of thing. Um, so I remember it like it it definitely set the scene well. Like, they did really well with that. It changed um, the tone of the game. Oh, oh again, yeah. It feels Resident Evil as hell when you walk into that section. Yeah, you're like, what game am I playing now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that was. And that leads right to the third boss, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My, my favorite line, though, right there in the hallway, because it like it forces you to into like these like mini cutscenes where like the guy comes out and he's like, "It's it's a ghost," <laughs> and then he falls yeah. down and it's just like I remember as a kid I was like, "What's a ghost? Like, what are we talking about?" <laughs> mm-hmm. And then you see the the fucking predator ninja, and I'm like, "Dude, this guy's fucking badass, whoever this guy is." And like I, yeah. I stopped being scared at that point because I was like, "This thing is crazy." And yep, and then it leads up to the the third boss, and then we meet Hal Emmerich. Who you're there to to rescue the um, well? You the meet him first, and then the boss fights yeah. initiates. Yeah, he goes to That's hide right. in the uh, locker. No. well, I mean, I guess you don't introduce yourself to him, but you do yeah, see no, him. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. So the the ninja has him cornered, and yeah, then yeah. and then Hal he pisses, pisses himself. His pants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pisses his pants. I I thought that was the greatest thing to put in the video. Like you don't see that often. No, you don't see people so scared. And there was steam coming out of it. Did you see that? I did not see that. No. Yeah, there's like steam coming off of his piss. Yep. But like the, the fact that 
the game shows like this guy is like dead scared that he yeah. pissed himself like oh this is serious you know mm -hmm. like there's not a lot of games especially back then that would do that would set it up like no this is serious like this guy is like beyond scared like he is scared stiff mm -hmm. and i was like oh that's so good <laughs> Especially, uh, so this game is set in 2005, so the Predator movie for sure has come out, and this guy's mm -hmm. like, this is a fucking Predator. Yeah. Like, what's happening? <laughs> but yeah, no, that was, that was like, that was one of those things that, like, stuck out to me, like, oh, dang. Like, they actually put in that he peed his pants, and it's on his pants, and on the floor, <laughs> and everything. I was, like, super impressed with that. I was like, ooh, that's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the dialogue between him and Snake is just... It's so fucking epic because it's just like, yeah, who are you? And he's like, uh, oh, no, he's, he said that in the revolver thing. Like, I'm like you. I have no name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in this, he says, uh, I come from a world where, where where such words are not meaningless or are meaningless or something like that. Mm -hmm. Sounds so, like. Yeah. And, and it's just so like theatrical and dramatic. And, mm -hmm. and then you just hear Hal say like, it's like one of my Japanese animes. <laughs> Which, which, yeah. which I wanted to ask, I don't know the Japanese version. Does he say Japanese anime or does he just say a fucking anime? I guess he would just say anime. Right? Yeah, I, I, like, would, I would hope so. Well, I remember it one. Or what yeah. if he says, it's like an American cartoon or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like an American cartoon. Well, I remember one time he says like Japanese animation. I was like, you mean anime? What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, this. this is back when... Um, anime wasn't so like prevalent in the Western world, you know. Oh, like yeah. we had like Astro Boy and Ultraman. I think uh, I'm trying to think of like the <sighs> anime that we other had. Ones. We might have had Dragon Ball by that point, maybe. I too, think it was about. I think Dragon Ball was out. Um, so yeah, so only like the like the real like the early weebs would know yeah. fucking like actual anime at this time. So having to say Japanese anime is is like it's around like the same time as like yeah. people explaining EMPs and movies all the time. Like what's sure. an EMP or, or is yeah. it saying Japan animation? Like Chris was saying, you know, it's like Japan it's just, animation. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's just, just a fucking anime. It's, it's just, just anime. anime. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So then, um, this fool's like, make me feel alive again. And yeah. you're like, all right, what, what, what'd you do, Chris? How'd you make him feel alive again? Oh, uh, that was, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. It was interesting. Uh, so at first I remember I would use the chaff grenade to stun him. And I was using the, uh, not the handgun, the... Uh, Tomas. Tomas, yeah, to shoot him. And it's it's funny because while I was playing this, I was on Discord. I know you know him, Noise. I was playing with, with, I was streaming for Bacon on Discord. Oh, okay. And he was watching me. And I was trying to figure out how to get him, how to shoot him. And I noticed around the room they had the Tomas ammo. So I was like, oh... You use the FOMAS because I used the handgun and it wasn't doing anything. The grenades weren't doing anything. And so I was like, okay, so I must have to use this. So I threw the chaff grenade and it would stun him. And then I was using the FOMAS to shoot him. And I was like, it's really not doing that much damage. And I remember he said, and I know he was trying to hold back as much as he could. He's like, well, that's a choice. And I was like, okay, is it not the right choice? Like, what am I doing wrong? And so I was like, well, what other options do I have? Like, I... I tried the handgun. It wasn't doing anything. I tried the grenades. They weren't doing anything. Like, he would just run away and before it did anything. And so I was like, the only thing I haven't tried yet is punching him. And so, sure enough, I would throw the chaff grenade, and he would stun, and I would go up to him and punch him the three times. And I was like, oh, that did, like, twice as much damage as the freaking bullets did. What the yep. heck? <laughs> and so that's that's what I ended up doing. And I remember uh, it took me, I think it took me, like, two two tries to figure that out. Because uh, the first try, I was just going through different weapons. And then that's when I landed on the FOMAS. And then noticed it wasn't doing a lot of damage. And I died. And then I was like, okay, I'll try the FOMAS again. And that's when the bacon had said, like, oh, no, uh, you know, that's that's an option or that's a choice or whatever. And I was like, okay, so I'll try something else. The only thing I haven't tried is punching. So I tried that that time. And, again, I, I ended up dying because um, I was low on health. And then the third time, I remember I got him, like, down to what is it like half health and then it's one of those things where it's like okay version two of the fighter or, or mm -hmm. section two or yeah. whatever um uh, phase two yeah and i was like okay so he he starts doing his thing where he's like jumping around all over the place jumping around and then he'll like charge at you and i died a couple times during that part as well and then i went back and and uh i think after the third time i got him to the third phase where he's like oh 
this is what I remember. This is what it used to be like and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, are you liking this? Like, that's super kinky, but okay. Like, <laughs> that's what you're into. No kink and, shame. Uh, yeah, but, no, uh, not at all. Should we keep fighting or <laughs> yeah. <are you> good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a safe word? So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I, I kept fighting him. And I remember I had almost gotten him knocked down um, almost completely. And then he, he, uh, he did that thing where you get up close to him or you, like, slowly walk towards you. And he would like teleport around Mm -hmm. and uh, I caught on to that pretty quick. I was like, okay, so he, you know, for the first part, he'll teleport once and he'll try to get you from behind. So I was like, okay, so walk towards him. And as soon as he teleports, turn around and go the other way. Or or as Autocom say, as soon as he flash steps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As who says? I was joking around. Autocon would say he flash steps <laughs> from an anime. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, okay. So I picked up on that pretty quick. And then uh, I remember he would do the thing where he would like teleport two or three times. And that caught me off guard. Uh, but then I would get used to that again. And it's like, okay, that's yeah, easy. And then it got to the point to where it's like, just stand near him, you know, because I would used to be like, I would, he would do the teleport thing. I'd punch him and then I would run off. And then he'd come towards me again. It's like, but I don't need to do that. I'll just stay right here. He'll start walking towards me. I know when he's going to teleport. And so it was fairly easy once I got that all figured out and everything that I got him down. But yeah, and then immediately after that I is when I messaged you guys like, uh, I just beat him. What do I do now? <laughs> this is two days in. What do I do? It's so, but Walk yeah. Around. It was, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so it was, it was an interesting fight. A uh, very interesting mechanic. I don't know how I feel about the fact that the the punches did more damage than the bullets. It kind of makes sense because if he's wearing a suit of armor, the bullets aren't going to hit that hard. Whereas if you're punching him, it's going to be more bludgeoning damage. So in that sense, it kind of makes some sense. But at the same time, it's like it's still a suit of armor (laughs) or whatever it is. So I think it's just uh, a story thing just to kind of force you into what he was asking you to do to begin with. Right. Okay. Did did you try shooting him without the chaff grenades, Chris? I did not. Oh, okay. Or I did, I did. Oh, okay. And I think, I don't know if I hit him or not. No. Nope, you definitely did not. Okay. Yeah, he he, he uses his uh, katana. Uh, sword sword to deflect all your bullets. Oh, uh, that's right, yeah. Which, which I remember when I first saw that, I was like, like you, you said noise, this guy is fucking cool, man. I was like, he, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it was probably... I mean, probably one of my first times ever seeing that in any kind of medium, deflecting bullets with your with the sword. You know? I think so too. I don't think I ever saw anything like that. And not that it didn't exist. It's just you know, I just never seen it before. So I thought that was incredibly cool. You know, yeah. Not not one bullet. Like you said, if you shoot the Famaz at him, same thing. You just block them all. And I was like, dude, this guy's fucking awesome. <laughs> I, th- I think that's ruined anything in movies that does that now because it's just like. You're not a fucking cyborg ninja motherfucker. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, so, yeah. like Wonder Woman does it with her like wrist guard yeah. things. Yeah. And I'm like, you're not a fucking cyborg ninja. Like, yeah. <laughs> with, with that said, you are 100% right. Because like I said, I pretty damn sure this was the first time I ever saw it. So anything after this that did it, I was like, you're not fucking cyborg ninja. You know, yeah. I just automatically assumed they were copying Metal Gear, even though they. Yeah, like cyborg ninja would fuck you up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How'd you deal with the, the hide and seek part? Oh, yeah, that was easy for me. The third phase, yeah. Yeah, um, where he, like, I'm over here, and it, like, shows clearly where he Hurry went. Hurry up and catch me. Yeah, it, like, shows clearly where he went. <laughs> and, like, yeah, it's it's hard to see him when he's in that mode, but there's also, like, and I, I love the way they, they, they did it, and I don't know how long it took them to figure this out or, like, what they had to do as far as, like, creativity or working around limitations. But the fact that he's he's clearly invisible but there's just a slight like deformation or so something. Yeah. Silhouette or whatever you want to call it. Just a slight variance on his, like the outline of him, basically that you can see where he is kind of, but at the same time, if he's moving, like he's going to be hard to track. Yeah. You know, but if he's standing still, you can kind of see where he is. Like it's not super easy, but you can, if you're paying attention, you can tell, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think they did a really good job with that because there's there's other games where it's like, oh, yeah, he's invisible and you can't see anything. But like that may Chameleon. not be how it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, OK, but I'm hitting where he just was and he's just not there anymore. There's no way he moved that fast, you know, Camellios. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like the fact that they they added that in. And again, I don't know like what they had to do to figure that out, but like. I applaud the devs and the art director and everything for that because that was that was really well done. Yeah, because 
they, they, it does show you where he lands the first time, and then the other two it doesn't show you. So if he happens to land outside of your camera view, mm-hmm. you, the intentional thing to do is you have to use your ears. So the stereo will actually tell you, oh, he's on this side of the room now, or he's on this side of the room. That's right. I do remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I remember using that. Yeah, because I was hearing, listening for the footsteps and wearing my headphones, and I was like, okay, he's to the left. Okay, he's above me. Oh, but there there's he is. also another way to know exactly where he is. Should I should I tell him, German? Yeah, I think so. The uh, thermal goggles. Oh, I didn't they'll, even think about yeah, that. Yeah, they'll give away his position right away. Okay. The Which thermal they're, goggles. <laughs> they're kind of necessary on extreme because the last phase, when he's walking towards you slowly, mm-hmm. you don't want to get hit by him once because that punch is like a one shot on extreme and it's already okay. super tough on on normal like he hits you super hard yeah but on that phase he's invisible the whole time on extreme oh okay so you definitely want to know exactly where he is and it also kind of prevents him from teleporting unfairly because if you don't have them on he will teleport unfairly like it's just like how the hell do you get over here like (laughs) yeah (laughs) like what the hell okay and did you figure out that you had to shoot him at the end like that's the only way to get near him Hmm. Or what'd you do? Oh, that's right. Yeah. The, uh, when he does that force field thing, that actually killed me. I had beaten him. <laughs> nice. I had just beaten him. And he's like, oh, and he, I remember the, the blue arc starts coming out. And like, I didn't even have time to react. And I, I, it was one of those things where I was down to just a sliver of health and I didn't have any rations left or anything. And it killed me. I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. So yeah, yes, you, yeah. you got the full experience. <laughs> and then I remember the second time after I'd, after I'd beaten him, I was like, okay, give him plenty of space. And so I'd like mm-hmm. run over to the next area and he did that. And then I noticed he had like jumped over and I was like, what? He's not dead yet. What are you doing? <laughs> and so I think it, I think it, it took a few jumps for him to do that. And then I shot him and he finally died. And, but yeah, it was like one of those things where I was like, I know I can't get near him. Like, I know I can't approach him because he's going to kill me with that little force field thing, whatever it is, electric yeah, well, yeah, lightning you know, or whatever. What it is. I assumed it was just this suit shorting out or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But yeah, eventually I was like, okay, I'll try a gun or something. And I, I pulled it out and shot him and yeah, he died. I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, the first time right. I had I had died to his little little lightning attack. And I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> cool. Did you try, like we were saying, there's so much attention to detail and you, you've noticed it. Did you ever try tossing him? No. Yeah. You try to toss him and um, he, he's acrobatic as hell. He'll just flip right through. He'll cartwheel or something okay. along those sites. So it's just kind of cool, like I said, to just kind of go back and the second playthrough, if you do one, just try different things and call different people. It's 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 a super fun, fun game. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. So that's basically the gameplay part of everything. Yeah, it seems like you had a fun time. Like it wasn't like insanely tough or anything like that. Yeah, it was, no. It was it was like a video game experience, like a modern video game experience. Yeah. But just like a 1998 graphics pretty much. So we'll just go quickly over the the story. So you're you're sneaking in, uh you're sent in because um these terrorists are demanding the remains of Big Boss. And Chris, you said that on the last time you said possibly that um Big Boss would not show up but that that uh, he would be mentioned. Yeah. And, and there we go. Yeah, you were, referenced, yep. Yeah, you were definitely spot on on that. And then also, I don't know if you noticed, but um, when you were escaping the cell after the DARPA chief died, that Meryl mistakes you for liquid. Yes. Right? Yeah, so, she's liquid? No. And yeah. Yeah, so if you want to find out why, watch the briefing stuff. Okay. Um, that'll definitely tell you, like, what the heck. Um, did you watch the intro, by the way? Like, did you just, like, when you're at the menu, did you just let the little story play? I think so. I don't remember much from it, so I'll watch it again, but I'm pretty sure I did let it play through, yeah. Yeah, so they basically explain that whole thing, that the, that the terrorists are demanding the remains of Big Boss, and that there's f- six of them, right? So they name all the guys. They're like, mm-hmm. there's Decoy Octopus, Vulcan Raven, Sniper Wolf, Psycho Mantis, Revolver Ocelot, and Liquid Snake. The man with the same code name as you. So that's like hmm, my equal, you know, like someone yeah. who, who, you know, which is weird because like Big Boss is supposed to be like the big badass, but then there's someone like as equal as you. So are you better <laughs> than Big Boss? Right. I mean, we beat him twice. So. Right. Yeah. Did we? Did. Did we? That's true. I mean, we beat him once and then he came back and beat him twice. Will he come back again? I don't know. 
Um, I mean, we set his ass on fire. He fucking better be dead. (laughs) (laughs) And so, yeah, so even Revolver Ocelot kind of reinforces this thing, and he's like, oh, it's, you know, I'm meeting the the man with the same codename as the boss. Oh, speaking of Revolver Ocelot, you get you get two um, endings with him. If you do good, he says just what I expect from the man with the same at name code name as the boss. Really? Does that dialogue change? Yeah, and if you do huh. bad on on his boss fight, he says I'm disappointed. No I expected way. more from you or something like that. Yeah, you have to like I think die a couple times and and they just take forever to beat him or something like that. Huh. I know my first playthrough, he says that you suck pretty much, and then later playthroughs. You know, I was like, "Oh, cool!" It dialogue changes. That's good to know. Interesting, yeah. So you don't remember what you got, Chris? Did you did you get? I don't remember. No. Uh, yeah, yeah but it, it his, uh, he says you're pretty good. That's what I'm used to him saying. Like you're mm-hmm. pretty good. Just a, just what I expected from the man with the same yep. code name as the boss. Yeah, yeah. And uh, if you do bad, if you do bad, he straight up tells you that he's disappointed. Pretty much same, like just short. It's just I'm disappointed. I expected more from you, or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and by that point, um, DARPA chief has died on us from a heart attack, and everyone's on the codec is acting real suspicious, like a heart attack. No, you know, and it's like Colonel Campbell, a hundred percent. It's could it be? Yeah. 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 No, I, I actually uh, like he I knows wrote something. down some notes. Uh, Colonel is sus is exactly what I wrote <laughs> in my notes. So <laughs> those are your only notes. Colonel is sus. <laughs> well, that's that's for the colonel. That's all I wrote. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But even even the DARPA chief was kind of being weird, right? Like he was like, he you seemed know, evasive. Yeah, and and um, there, there's a meme on him, you know, where it's like where where uh, Solid Snake knows about Metal Gear, and the meme is that is that DARPA chief goes, "You knew," <laughs> and it's like a so it's like <laughs> yeah, a yeah. Meme. that's you what knew. you were doing in chat today. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Spy loves that. He's like, "You knew." I made that a sound effect for my stream. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, you know, after you tell him. You know, like, I'm going to get you out of here. Then he starts, like, probing you more. You know, yeah. he's like, you haven't heard any other way to dis- to disable the, you know, the launch, right? And, and it's like, well, I just fucking told you no. I and know, then, I know, right? And then he's like, what about the Pentagon? And then that's when he, like, has a heart attack. And it's just like, what's happening? And the funniest thing when he dies and when, the, when Kenneth Baker dies is that he's not very reactive. He's just kind of like, <laughs> he's just kind of like sitting there like, what, hmm. what are you doing? You having a heart yeah. attack? What's happening? Yeah. But I think that's just part of the animation or whatever, just to intensify like the 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 actual person dying, like that person is having the reaction. Well, yeah. with that said, the sound effects always sound like stomach, like diarrhea, not fucking heart attack. So I don't know if that's just me. The like, right before they die. Oh, the just, the oh the the gurgling kind of sound. I I always thought I'm like, what the fuck is he got? Yes, like, it's shit. His know, pants. It is. It's like it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like weird. So, yeah, so that happens. DARPA chief dies. Meryl escapes her cell that she was right next to it and frees you for some reason and then yeah. interrogates you. And then you both get out together and then you get a good look at her butt. And <laughs> when, <laughs> she, <laughs> when she is in the elevator, I don't know if you noticed, like, so Psycho Manus shows up and she mm. like, well, he shows up after this, but she shoots at you, which is kind of uncharacteristic because you kind of just saved her and she didn't even have the nerve to shoot those soldiers so why was she shooting mm-hmm. at you and then psycho Manus is there and he says good girl just like that mm-hmm. which is kind of like okay why did he why did that just happen and you know snake reports to naomi like i think i had a hallucination yeah what, yeah. what the hell oh, okay um and so yeah that that's where naomi says like oh yeah that's psycho Manus. and he's like okay so that was mantis blah blah, blah. and then you call meryl you guys have that conversation where she's she definitively kind of shows that she is too green for being here mm-hmm. um and you know snake's like just stay put and she's like fuck that and she's like i'll meet you at that <laughs> other building you know whatever and opens the door for you and that's when you either get caught or don't get caught by the lasers and so you encounter vulcan raven in the tank oddly enough the only thing you defeat from that tank are the are the two two soldiers that were in the tank because vulcan raven is still alive he has a conversation with Liquid over the radio. That's right, yeah. And says, are you happy? He got the key card, which makes everything even more sus. Like, why would they want me to get the level three key card to keep going? Mm-hmm. Um, not only that, but he also embarrasses Revolver Ocelot. Like, oh, I heard he took your hand, bitch. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, he calls him General Ivan. Did you notice that, German? I did notice that. Um, um, 
Yeah, so we we're gonna have to talk about that in the future because um, names in this franchise are not very consistent, <laughs> to say the least. So okay. they're uh, happy that you got. Oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Oh, well, I was gonna say, just kind of going, we're talking about Meryl opening the door for you. If if I remember, she hears at least she suspects Stark, but Chief is talking to someone. So maybe that's why she opened the door because she was planning to meet up with him or something, you know? Yeah. And, and I mean, was... she even also like, well, well, the thing is that she thinks you killed the chief at first. Yeah. So I don't know. You're building trust with her, I guess. Yeah. What, what's funny about that scene? Um, I don't know if you know you can do this, Chris, but if you go into first person view, it tells you in the manual as well. You can push R1 and L1 to lean left or lean right. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah. So it's kind of funny because if you stand at the that door, or in, in other scenarios too, but in that door particularly, uh, that scene, uh, you can lean way the fuck out and you can clearly see Meryl and she can clearly see you, but it, nothing happens, you know? So I just, I always thought it was super funny. <laughs> um, I'm assuming if you do that maybe in the first person mode and you shoot her, nothing will happen because, you know, she's just, just standing or something. But but yeah, um, I think that's why she opens the door for you. It's, it's just she was waiting to see who would come out of that room maybe she thought far but she would come out and then she sees your ass or something i don't know oh, okay yeah it could be i know yeah we get that we get that call from deep throat and he's one of our fans and so chris is suspecting he's an enemy but also maybe a friend yeah then we make our way to the second building to go rescue hal which he introduces himself to us and we learn his entire life story by the way yeah that was a long cut scene. Yes, that was a very long cut scene, but <laughs> this is kind of where you really see where Kojima is coming from. The nuclear history of Japan definitely drives Kojima and his games. Yeah. Um, not just Metal Gear, but also Death Stranding and most likely Police Knots and Snatcher. I've not played those other two, but he was deeply affected by war. Um, you know, his parents lived through all that shit, so... I think in Zone of Enders too. I don't think there's nuclear threat, but there's definitely like war and like yeah. colonization almost in that game, if I remember. Yeah. So I, th- I think what most people kind of say about Otacon and Kojima is that the things that Otacon says are are like Kojima speaking hmm. to us, the players. So you know, like he, he he likes using dates and weird stuff like this, like just to kind of put more emphasis like oh yeah my dad was born on the day of the Hiroshima bomb you know and um you know that like they showed like real footage of those mm-hmm. explosions in the game which is you know it's as a kid that was very impactful to me i was like i've never seen that before yeah i never even really processed it as a kid hearing about it in school you know like in school the way they gloss over history really in school oh, is yeah. awful you know it's just like and we had wars, and then there was this war, and then there yeah. was this war, and they never really tell you like how awful it really is. And this game forced me to confront that head on. I was like, that explosion is so crazy. And then, and then also at that point, I didn't know anything about like radiation. I didn't know the aftermath, mm. the fallout. As long as that cutscene was, I feel like it's one of the most important ones in this oh, game yeah. as far as establishing what these games are actually about. Yeah, they're anti-war. And I, and I think the fans out there are right. I think Otacon is Kojima speaking to us. And he's also a big fucking anime and robot nerd, which is literally what Otacon is. Yeah. <laughs> Pop quiz, Chris. What does Otacon stand for? Uh, <clears throat> Autonomous convention? <laughs> Close. Otaku Autonomy? convention. Oh, otaku. Okay. Yeah. Otaku, I guess, is... Which I didn't know this. Those are anime fans. Anime yeah. fans, Longer yeah. Manga fans, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we get that whole story. But right before we get that whole story, we find out who the fucking Cyborg Ninja is. What'd you think of that, Chris? Uh, I don't remember that, honestly. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God, Chris. No, I, the... I remember it happening. I don't remember what the like the story points were, basically. It's the biggest twist in the game <laughs> thus far. The, the ninja is Gray Fox. That's right. I do remember that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! How did I forget that? Yeah, I mean it, it was a while ago. Oh you, man! You, yeah, it was like made... almost two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was. I remember like what, how, and then yeah, he kind of explained like, oh, I didn't actually die. Like they kind of re put put me back together and everything. I was like, that must suck. And then he talks about like how it's always painful and like they're they give him medicine and stuff. And I was like, 
Yeah, that makes sense. So Naomi like, explains that stuff. Naomi, it was that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because yes, you call you call in and you're like, I I know that was Gray Fox, and he's like, yeah. that's he's like he's like that's impossible. Like you you should know better than anyone. He died in Zanzibar. Oh, by the way, yeah. in this game they call it Zanzibar, which is incorrect because Zanzibar is a real life country, and <laughs> yeah. Zanzibar land. Is the, is the fictional one, yeah. So no, he just omitted the land part. Yeah, he just omitted the land part. Oh, I I figured in the first one they meant Zanzibar, and Zanzibar land was like a mistranslation or uh. like just a way of saying it in the game versus like, no, this is just a fictional place. I didn't realize. Okay. So no, I, yeah. So yeah. I just figured it was Zanzibar. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know why they called the fictional place Zanzibar Land. Like they could have made up any other name. Yeah. But they decided on Zanzibar Land and it's like, <laughs> okay, well, that's not going to confuse anyone. Yeah. But yeah, Gray Fox has returned. Not Schneider. Also, Holly did not return. That is not yeah. Holly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what else can we say about the story? Um, Naomi is hold- withholding information. You know, they're like, why didn't you fucking tell us about this ninja? And she's like, because it's classified information. And it's yeah, like, yeah, that's right. What? Like, you yeah. work for Foxhound. Like, this is something you should be telling us. Yeah. So now Naomi is becoming a little sus. The whole organization, and I, I remember you and Herman talking about this earlier about like government conspiracy, mm. and I don't trust the government and everything, but I'm I'm starting to get that sense now, like, Whoever is leading these missions and whoever is telling me what to do, like, they're clearly not giving me all the information I need to to do the missions, which means either they are expecting me to die at some point, like they want, like in the first game, like, oh, you weren't supposed to find out this stuff and you were supposed to just go in and and just you know get like basic information and leave, but you you went too far and and now we got to kill you kind of thing, mm-hmm. or they're like there's some ulterior motive or something where like, oh, we're, you know, we want to find this information, but we're going to send you in to do it because you're our pawn. Mm -hmm. But we also know you're going to be good enough to get the information. And if you don't, oh, well, you know, you're expendable. Yeah. Yeah. You're a nameless soldier. Yeah. But now this time you're like the legendary solid snake, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're the big boss. So you're capable. So they chose you (laughs) for a reason. You know, it's like, Meryl hell? knows you, but you know, which which makes me laugh. Ah, oh, does she talk about? No, maybe it doesn't happen yet. Never mind, I won't say that yet. But um, yeah, she knows exactly who you are. Uh, which uh, I yeah, I she does talk out. about it. She's she says that her uncle. No, no, no. Uh, well, I was gonna say her tattoo. Oh, yes, that's unlegible, and I don't know how the fuck I made a. I don't think I ever noticed what the tattoo was back in the day. The but, the loading screen to uh, Metal Gear 2? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be the fox that has that bullet that curves Chris. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah he, he, have, yeah, he, has he hasn't seen it yet. I mean, but it, it's, you can kind of see it from the vent if you look down, which Chris did not do. He was not a creeper. Nope. Weirdly and enough. Did you know? Uh, I, I hope you do know noise. But so, Chris, so on, top of, on top of looking down at the vent, if you exit the vent and come back, she'll be doing a different exercise. And if you exit the vent again and come back, she'll be doing another exercise. Noise had told me about that. And uh, I remember like thinking about that when I was doing the hard playthrough. Like, do I want to do that? I was like, nah, I don't want to. Like, it's going to take me long enough to get through the fights and everything. I don't want to yeah. spend too much time doing that. So. so I did it on stream on Sunday because I wanted to show all the Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll just go over that. The Yeah, so you do it three times. It's three different exercises. It's um, it's uh, sit-ups first. Then it's one-arm push-ups. And then it's like leg stretches against the wall. Yeah. And then if you do it again, now she's doing all three of those different exercises, but in her underwear. Yeah. <laughs> so if you pervs out there want to watch at some pointy pixels and geometry <laughs> in their underwear, you can do and that. I'm pretty sure I, I didn't know that the first couple times I played through. It probably oh, no, wasn't until not. I revisited it after, yeah. you know, Metal Gear 2 came out and the internet was more available that I was like, what? I went back and I was like, oh shit, I guess you're right. And that's when I realized, well, because Metal Gear 2, Solid Solid 2, has, I mean, a ton of Easter eggs. So that's when I was like, dude, let me go back and see what else is in this first one, you know? Yeah. And then another um, Easter egg in the um, lab, in the, labor- in the laboratory where you fight um, Gray Fox, there's a PlayStation in there. Oh, I missed that too. Huh, no. Yeah. So, like in the middle cubicle, there's a little PlayStation. You can even see the controller and everything. And the uh, that's that has also the police knot poster. Uh huh. The posters, yeah. two posters for the police knots, are also in that room. That's cool. But yeah. yeah, those are pretty much the Easter eggs, and that's the story up until so, this point. Okay. So we'll do a little small section of our of our of our uh, what's it called? 
my brain is starting to melt. Oh shit, it's midnight? What the f- Yeah, we've been it talking a while. It was 11 o'clock last time I checked. <laughs> <laughs> um, our favorite segment, Ask Chris, what do you think oh. is going to happen in the next third of the game? We'll just make this quick so that we can sign off. <laughs> oh, gosh, I don't even really know. Now that everyone's like clearly super sus and uh, it doesn't seem like you can trust anyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we're going to encounter Gray Fox again. Uh, I don't think that's the last we're going to see of him. I think there's going to be another person who's going to die of a heart attack and and Snake is just going to get pissed off and like, you need to tell me what's going on or I'm done. And there's going to be some sort of information that's going to either leak that the colonel is not completely on our side or that there's a lot more to this that he's than he's been led to believe. Uh, and I'm sort of I'm sort of leaning more towards there's just more to this than he's led to believe. And it's like like uh, what's her name it alluded to like, oh, it's top secret. We couldn't tell you, but you're sending me in to do all this stuff and you're not giving me the information I need. Why? Uh, so I'm kind of leaning more towards that, that there's there's more going on behind the scenes or it's more interconnected than they're letting him know because you are legendary and you are your solid snake. But, you know, you're still just a pawn to us because uh, we're too important and we're bureaucrats and we don't get our hands dirty. That's what you're for. So we're sending you to do the dirty work for us. We're just going to give you as much information as you need to get by and no more than that don't ask any questions kind of thing so yeah i mean uh i, I don't know whether to confirm or deny that yeah no but it sounds <laughs> I good don't, <laughs> we're, we're, i think i think we're the uh government in this case chris just just keep going and we'll tell you what you need to know when you need to know it. <laughs> great oh Fantastic. and i forgot yeah. this is the gas room put on your gas mask yeah <laughs> yeah thanks <laughs> uh, uh one last thing before we, we sign off i i don't remember who says it noise I think it was DARPA chief or uh-huh. arms tech president Baker. One of those guys says they wouldn't. Yeah. I, I know what you're going to say. Cause I, I was going to mention this too. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 It pretty much without saying it referring like Chris was saying, like, is there someone else pulling strings kind of thing? You know, it's interesting to know that at least from what I understood. Yeah. It's, it's good. It was not planned ahead, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess I don't want to say much, but there's just a line that was in there that I'm like, huh, it does uh, relate to the future games. Interesting, you know? Oh, no, that's not the thing I thought you were going to say. Oh, no, that's not. Oh, what were you thinking? So what I I thought you were going to talk about was that Kenneth Baker mentions that um, they both have implants in their brain that doesn't allow for for anyone to read their minds. So um, another thing that's sus is that DARPA chief claims that Psycho Mantis dove into his mind to get the launch code. And Kenneth Baker says, like, no, you know, you must have heard that wrong because we all we both have implants in our brains. The only reason they got Kenneth Baker's launch code is because he's not good with torture. That's why his arm's broken and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kind of also makes another thing sus. It's like, well, well then how how'd they get the DARPA chief's launch code? You know, yeah. so, some, so something something's amiss huh. there. I don't know what you're talking about then, German. I'm trying to figure um, out. <laughs> I'll say it. Chris won't know. Uh, I think I said I, don't, I think it's Baker. Uh, no, Darpa Chief. Darpa Chief. He says they wouldn't or they they couldn't or something along those lines. Oh, oh, the the, the you actually went and did it. I think so. While he's and, having the heart attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. What and, did you do to me? These guys do, actually went do and you, did it. Do you think he's referring to Lalu? Oh, uh, that's what. I, yeah, yeah. The that's Lali what I was, Lule, low. Yeah, that's what I was like. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Chris is gonna be so fucking confused, dude. I yep. Don't worry, don't, don't worry. That's why I said that. Instead no of, idea. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can say Lolly Lule Low because Chris yeah. is gonna be like, "What?" <laughs> it's yeah. it's the most it's the most cryptic words you will ever hear, Chris. But and, but that uh, but but that that in hindsight is a reference to them, right? I believe so. Um, yeah. I don't think Kojima was thinking that far ahead. No, but yeah, it's it's interesting that but I, I like, often oh, think shit. about that. Yeah, I often do think about like if that if, the, if that's what they were talking about, the Lali Lilo. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, you'll know all about them, Chris, and you'll. <laughs> oh man, it's, all in time. Yeah, the Lali Lulelo. <laughs> I miss saying that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have fun. You're gonna you're gonna come out with a million. Um, phrases and memes out of this whole series Chris. nice yeah and 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 i hope uh you get to the point to where you just kind of want to explain the story to other people and other people are just gonna look at you strange like <laughs> yeah what are you talking about are you on drugs <laughs> this sounds stupid <laughs> yeah all right so 
Uh, for the next episode, we're going to play through the second third of this game, which will be... I'm trying to think of the bosses. S- mm. So I think he's going to have to stop at the top of a building. Am I correct, German? It depends on whether you count one encounter as a mini boss or a full boss. Because you had told Chris originally that life bar was meant boss. Yes. So the mini boss you're thinking of does not give you a life bar at the top of that building. Oh, it doesn't? No. So it's, yeah, it's not until after the actual defeat of this boss that you get uh, health. So okay. it's, it's okay. at the top of a building um, when you get your health. So that should be the sixth boss. Okay. If I'm correct, right? Like, I, yes. Yeah, I'm correct. Yeah. Because now I'm thinking of the last three bosses. Um, this one, this second third might might actually give you give you some trouble. The first mm. third of the game is like, okay, I'm learning how to play the game. Yeah. And then now for sure it's going to be kind of the same type of rules, the same Legend of Zelda rules where like new weapon, you should use new weapon on new boss, right? So keep that mindset. Okay. But of course there are multiple ways to defeat bosses as Metal Gear has taught us before. You know, set down a bunch of mines and turn around and Mar- and uh, Dr. Super Arms <laughs> will <laughs> explode. Yeah. With you being hard for some reason. Yeah. You'll, you'll be fine. Um, so yeah, you'll... Uh, you might, I, I don't want to tell you to look at a guide for certain things. I want you to experience it all the way through. Don't give up on certain bosses because it's going to seem like some of them are impossible, but the game will help you itself. So try to make sure that the game helps you if you are stuck. Okay. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, don't, don't look for guides because this is part of the whole experience, especially with these types of bosses. Well, and now that I'm like, we're not doing a whole game in a week. I can take more time to like spend yeah. some time with it and oh okay let's you know and like I said context clues and stuff like that so I will definitely give it a good college try before I even think about looking at a, at a uh, walkthrough or whatever and I'll probably message you guys first before I even do that so yeah if anything we might just give you some like breadcrumbs like go about this route you know without telling you yeah. the answer not like master miller where he's like oh this is the code <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's fine so okay i'll do that but yeah this is why i split the game up into at least three parts um i know german was like oh yeah we could talk about the whole game in one episode like no like i definitely <laughs> i want to like deep dive into these games because especially this one this one is so important metal gear solid one is the jumping off point for most of the western world into metal gear and uh i know how important it is to fans and i just want to give it its its due diligence and its recognition because yeah it's it's a deeper game than you think it is and as quickly as you got through the game there was a lot right like a lot happened oh yeah well like i said i i had the stuff i didn't even remember until you mentioned something or you know said something that triggered a memory like oh yeah you're right and it's just like yeah "Yeah, there's a lot to it so oh yeah gray fox yeah that big ass twist yeah (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but it'll be more fresh in your mind this time uh, since we're not, you know, going to be a week and a half out. Yeah. Full disclosure, we had to get German a mic so that um, he sounds a lot better now, doesn't he, guys? He sounds pretty dope. Much. Much, much better. Uh, and we also had to get uh, Chris the games so that he can play them. So now he's he's pretty much stacked with a bunch of Metal Gear games. Yeah. Except for uh, five. He needs to get that at some point. Well, he'll get that when, when we get there, which is yeah. way in the future. Yeah. Just a bit out. Yeah. So, yep, that's that's the plan up until the sixth boss. People listening, if you've already replayed this, or if you've already played this before, you know which boss we're talking about. And um, any uh, last thoughts, guys? I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready for Chris to keep playing it. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'm I'm looking forward to the challenge. Not not that I've not enjoyed the game or anything until this point, but uh, it's it was one of those things where, like I said, I was, I was a little pleasantly surprised that, wait, that's it? I already did it. Like that's all it took, and, <laughs> and uh, so I'm I'm definitely looking forward to the uh, the more challenging mode. Um, and it, it makes sense because a lot of games are like that now, where it's like, oh, here's the beginning of the tutorial phase, if you will, and you know we'll hold your hand, we'll give you all these clues, and and sort of make everything easy for you. And then, okay, now that you know all the mechanics of the game, now we're gonna really throw you to the wolves, you know, and and take everything you've learned in the first part of the game and apply that now, but we're not going to give you as many clues, you know, kind of thing. So I look forward to that. Yeah. Yep. That's definitely what's going to happen. Nice. Yeah. You said no last words, German. No, no. That's it for me. Just one, one, 
kind of get through this one. Not because I want to rush it because I like this game a lot. And I want to talk more about it. You know, I want Chris to like get to the next part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the, it's, it's crazy how much we can get out of, like we got more out of the, me- like the mechanics than we did the story on this episode. No shit. No shit. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of crazy. I kind of expected the opposite, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's only one third story and the mechanics were a whole overhaul kind of it's first 3d uh, met, uh, metal gear game. So, yeah. Oh, so now that we're mentioning that, sorry, one, one last thing. So, the thing that you should have been using 90% of the time, Chris, um, you did mention it, which means you know about it, um, is the leaning up against walls. So oh, okay. as I watched you try to get back into the elevator in the tank hangar and you were hiding in that fucking box <laughs> and those guards kept going like, oh, just a box. And then yeah. sometimes they would tip you over. Mm-hmm. It's not random. It's just that you keep showing up as a box and they're like, what is this box doing here? Now it's in a different position and blah, blah, blah. So you're actually antagonizing them to kick you over. And also oh, okay. if you're in their path, they mm-hmm. will kick you over because they're like, well, this thing's clearly in my path. Yeah. I know sometimes they'll walk through you because you're just outside of their like programmed path, but you can lean up against walls and enemies won't see you because you are, you know, you're flat up against the wall. Oh, okay. But it changes the camera for you to see where they're coming from. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're at a corner and you lean up against that corner, the camera will move so that it's like it's like if you were leaning yeah. over that corner. Okay, so, I've I've seen that a few times, and I've I've definitely used that before. I didn't know like if you're out in the open up against the wall that they wouldn't be able to see you. Okay. Yeah, I mean unless they're looking directly at you at the wall. But if they're like walking by you. Yes. Okay. So use that to your advantage. That is a huge huge part of Metal Gear Solid. From now on, pretty much. It's something I'm sure German doesn't use as often anymore because I don't really. Like, I just know the paths and I just run by them or throw them or whatever. Yeah, definitely don't lean, especially not on this one. The few more later games, I do use it more. Yeah, but as a beginner, that is a lifesaver because you cannot, you know, it's it's it takes longer to go into first person and lean out, you know, because which, by the way, they can't see you if you lean out. Yeah, you can't. But it, t- it just takes longer and they can spot you because you're not leaned up against the wall. Right. So that is another piece of advice uh, I will give you. And um, yeah, I didn't want to tell you that on stream. I was like, I'm just going to watch him struggle a little bit more. It's funnier this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got our marching orders, guys. Cool. Very good. Listeners, uh, thank you for sticking around uh, for this pretty long episode, but I hope you guys are happy with all the information that we talked about. This has been uh, Me- uh, Codec Calls, a Metal Gear Saga podcast where we play and replay the games from 1987 to the present with two veterans and one noob. And uh, I have been Luis, a.k.a. Noise One, and my two co-hosts go ahead and sign off. Is German. You can call me Contra, a.k.a. Riser. That is a third name. German Contra Riser. I forgot about that noise. Ch- change your name legally to that. <laughs> and I am Dammit Chris, a.k.a. Chris, a.k.a. The World's Worst Gamer. And uh, thanks for joining us. All right. This is us signing off. Good night. Bye. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yes, sir. The entire episode is out now. Those three are still playing. More content? Yes, sir. Pixel-Benders.com is the best place to find it. Yes, you can click the link in the description below. Yes, you can send your questions to info at pixel-benders.com. No, sir, it doesn't cost a thing to give the show a five-star rating. That's right. Nobody knows you are the one that will keep this podcast alive. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye, Mr. Listener. <laughs>